Stories Podcast, your number one show for everything guitar. <laughs> hey everybody, welcome to the technical support line at the Guitar Stories Podcast. We've already had an error because I couldn't hear the audio, so I stopped it on five. So if you're watching this and you, you got to five, that's why. But now it's working. Um, Dan, do you hear me? <laughs> I can hear you loud and clear. Hello, Andy. Oh, you cheeky boy. Um, hello, person sitting next to you, Dan, who is not going to respond to my question. But let's assume that Henning can also hear me. <laughs> um, I did announce a few weeks ago that I was going to be at Meinl Ibanez in Germany today for this episode. In fact, I announced it for last week. I'm very clearly not there. I'm still in my studio here in Austria yep. for reasons that I don't want to go into, apart from the fact that I am very upset and a little bit lonely but yeah at least mm. at least i'm not sat next to mr grumpy dan how are you how are you dan how are you i'm good i'm excellent uh we're already shooting material for the new lineup i think mr poster boy already posted uh something from the latest edge development <laughs> So yes, check out his Instagram I, if you're interested to see what he posted. I think he sort of, I think he snickered. <laughs> and then. apart from that, yeah. Snicker. Yeah, yeah, kinda, kinda, yeah. Yeah, and apart from that, everything's good. I'm, I'm, I'm you know, back in the game and doing well. And uh, I was looking, so looking forward to having you here. But um, yeah, you know, yeah. another day. Another time. Another, another episode. Life. So looking yes. forward to that. Let's just say hello to the people in the live chat. Know. It's a live show. People Who's in the are chat, fairly happy. We've got Valeria. Yeah. We've got Buzzle. We've got, oh, a name that I can't pronounce. Um, I'll say his Marcelo is probably his surname. <laughs> Any idea how to pronounce Spanish-looking words, Dan? I'm English. My language education was Frank. next to nothing. Jo jo Joao, Mar Marcello. Joao Marcello. Is that right? Is it oh. close? Joao, Joao Marcello? I don't know, but you speak Spanish with an Italian accent. Fergie um, says no audio. Fergie <laughs> says no audio. <laughs> apparently, <laughs> so uh, apparently you need to. Some people refresh the page. Um, if you if you're watching this live and there's no audio, please refresh the page. In fact, you're not going to hear me saying this. So <laughs> I don't know why I'm saying that. <laughs> Thanks, man. Thanks, Danny. <laughs> Um, yeah, so Alexis Guitars, Amanda is here. Welcome back to the I'm, show, I'm Amanda. I'm again, Henning and I, we are at six pixels. You're what? We look like Minecraft. We, we yeah, look you've like got, Minecraft. It's, it, there's something to do with something. It might pick up in a little bit. It might be the fact that uh, Austrian Internet still hasn't updated to the fiber optic that is literally 15 meters from my gar uh, garden. Or it could be the, the minor tinternet that likes to mess us about a little bit. Or it could be the fact that it's just far too grumpy on that signal and the internet doesn't want to show it on my channel because of the yeah. grumpiness. Maybe if we reduce the grumpiness a little yeah. bit. Yeah. I'm so glad to um, to have a guest on. Joao that, says um, it is Portuguese. Welcome. It's Portuguese. I'm sorry, man. I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah. I was bound to get it wrong, so I just <laughs> fessed up and got it wrong. We also got Rick. Um, apparently, that's Henning Ryan. didn't bring one of those expensive cameras he has. Oh, yeah, that's probably right. That would have fixed it. Thanks, Valeria. <laughs> um, I did. I'm just not allowed to use it. <laughs> oh, it speaks. It speaks. How many episodes of this do you have? This is 50 55. Five. You've been on How like two episodes. You have? Less than fifty-five. Kinda, yeah. I have not. You yeah, you have been on the on the very last episode of the first season. We had oh. Ryan and you and yeah, the other had... guys. We just got a three euro super chat from Mikhail asking us if we're happy now. Um I edited the video I'm today not. where, where Mikhail gave me a live uh, super chat when we were at Gear Streets. I totally forgot that happened. And you were in the room at the time, Henning. Do you remember that <laughs> happening? I'm trying to I trick you so, into yeah. talking. Yeah. Ah. 55 episodes and I thought we're friends. 
<laughs> loads of really talented hot girls he had on freaking jamie humphreys before me and pretty much every guitar player on the freaking planet before the person that you claim is your friend continue <laughs> we'll continue you too you don't laugh <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it, I, I was just i was just making up my my mind that that actually um the 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 video quality blends in perfectly with the shirt that henning is wearing because he's wearing yeah. eight bits super mario yeah perfect so this shirt is available at mrgoogoo.com the links can be found under my video if you go to mrgoogoo.com and use the coupon code hp not 42 just hp you will get 15 percent off mrgoogoo.com Buy your shirts now. Probably now because then you go to the website and you don't watch this crap. <laughs> That's right. That's right. We should um we should probably do some news. Um the news yep. is that um I did a giveaway or some of the news. I, I did a giveaway recently where I had to choose some people to win some Jupiter FX pedals. And we're gonna do that right now, live on the show. So uh time to That's read. amazing. Whoops. That is there we not go. the news. <laughs> so, so that is me with a play button in the middle of my nose, which Henning apparently put there on purpose. And <laughs> you could win, and I say these pedals, these pedals here, the Jupiter FX Kaleidoscope and the new version of the Warlow. Henning, did you know there was a new version of the Warlow? Damn it. <laughs> Well, there is. There's a little <laughs> micro switch inside where you can switch modes to make it uh, ratty rather than Big Muffy. Anyway, I've got to give these two pedals away because that's why All Chris right. Jupiter sent them to me because he's a very nice guy. And in the video, um, all you had to do to win the pedals was to leave a comment. Excuse me, Windy Pops. Leave a comment um, saying <laughs> that Chris Jupiter is a lovely bloke. So if I go over to my Firefox now... This is the, the, the video, and if you commented on this video, then you have a chance to win the pedals. So I'm going to copy that URL. I'm going to take it to YouTube Random Comment Picker. I'm going to paste it in there, so you should be able to see me doing this. I'm going to filter the duplicate users. I almost said losers then. I thought I was on a different channel. Uh, include <laughs> replies and filter comments. But I'm not going to filter it because we're going to do it live. And then I'm going to get the YouTube comments, doing it live. 268 right. unique comments. All right. Cross your fingers, toes, eyelids, everything. Now, here we go. It says start raffle and pick random winner. Before I do that, I'm going to do this. Start. <laughs> Okay, Mark Smith <laughs> is the name that's come up on the screen. However, he did not write in his comment what I asked to write. And you know what that means, Dan? Yep. Du, 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 du. It means we've got to roll again. Do it again. We've got to roll again. Yeah. So pick another winner. Here we go. Sorry, Mark Smith, but them's the rules. Here it comes. Here it comes. Here it comes. Nick Hart. I know Nick Hart. He comes to the channel very often. Nick Hart, you have won yourself a Jupiter FX Kaleidoscope, which is just there, and it is phenomenal. And you've also won yourself a Warlow, which, um, if you're listening to the audio version, this is what the box sounds like. There's the Warlow. That's the brand new Warlow. Uh, mm. Nick, you've won it. I will somehow contact you. Unless, of course, you're listening to this or watching this, then please contact me via Instagram is the best way to contact me. Um, or just, just write an email to Henning and he'll pass it on to me because uh, that's that's how Henning and my relationship is. Is that okay, Henning? What was? <laughs> Past tense. Past tense. Okay, okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I'm excited. We've, we've given that away. Um, we didn't really have any other news. It's, it's kind of news, but not news, isn't it, Dan? There's There's a lot of stuff going on at the moment. Um, yeah, but in the guitar world, I'm not going to say there's nothing happening. It's just nothing that we fancied sharing with you. That's all. Is that fair to say? I think so. Yeah. Okay. If we're wrong on that, let us know in the chat. Um, so if, yeah, let us know. Apparently there's someone called HP 42 in the chat, but he should, I mean, he's, he's part of the podcast via the chat. That's odd. <laughs> 
I don't know. Yeah, so congrats to Nick Hart. Um, I will I will write you a message under your comment to let you know that you won. And also, please contact me at some point in the future. If you don't, I don't know what we'll do. I'll ask Chris Jupiter what the best way forward is. I do you believe, know where, Dan, it's where, where Nick comes from? Week, so. yeah, with, with pleasure. Uh, just just question, uh, where, where does Nick reside? Is he an American guy or Brit or... Oh, and, and now I can't hear Dan. Wonderful. What's wrong? <laughs> um, I can't hear you, but apparently the program can. Now, we updated the program earlier, and uh -huh. it said it updated some audio issues, which I wasn't having, and now I am. What happened last time <laughs> okay. is it kicked in as Dan was talking. Okay. Let me just check what's happening. Yeah. Great, I'll, I'll just keep Thank you talking. for keeping me updated. I'm going to do that and click some buttons. So if anyone's wondering, we're using Ecamm Live, which is a marvelous program, but it's having a few issues at the moment. They've released like six updates in the past four days. Mm. Um, Dan is back. Wonderful. Dan is back. That's good. Okay. Awesome. Well, Dan never left. I'm talking about from my side. Okay. Mm. Let's hear a little theme song. Awesome. New picks. And what would be pick of the week without a couple new paddles? So, or, th or three. Or three paddles, even better. That's uh, three times the fun. And actually, uh, JHS had a series called, the th I think, the, th uh, the three series. It yep. launched a year ago. And uh, I think that was a collection of seven six or seven pedals and now they added even more pedals to that collection um they added a hall reverb flanger and a phaser pedal that's your pick of the week yeah why not have you played these no not yet how can it be your pick of the week if you haven't even played them because i find them interesting the white pedals so you have no experience with them and you're pushing these on <laughs> unsuspecting customers <laughs> without even having checked them out that's irresponsible that's all i'm saying, all I'm, saying. I'm not saying it's irresponsible <laughs> all i'm saying i'm Look not how saying great these pebbles are it's my pick of the week you haven't even freaking played them uh, uh, you don't you don't have to buy them henning it's okay. just like it's i'm not it's just a pick from the news. I was going to know I'm not. I know, I know. It's just a pick from the news because I find them interesting because the, the series actually, the, the three series was quite successful. Um, and I I read from a lot of people that bought them and they were happy with them. So seeing Jay just adding a couple new effects is, is quite some news to I me. I told people that something's good because someone told me it's good. Then then that would be wrong. So I'm, so I'm saying. <laughs> so starting Ooh. over Ooh. yeah we, we can just go on you know he, he will go and, and rumble every now and then that's that's just how he rolled so uh, that's okay but basically uh we've got three different pedals they're all clocking at 99 uh, bucks which uh, is kind of right in the ballpark where the other pedals were um i don't have too much information about that apart from that uh you've got uh, the hall reverbs got some modulation and decay that you can set and the rest is pretty much self-explanatory. Then Flanger is always interesting because Sweetwater has Black Friday deals. And if you go and use my link under my videos, uh, you can get 15% <laughs> off on all JHS pedals this week only. So the 99 will be less. Hashtag math. <laughs> please, so, please do question, use Henning's need, links because the one thing Henning yeah. needs is more money. Doesn't have enough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> more money, more cameras. <laughs> <It sounds> like... <laughs> but, Use Andy's link. But here's the thing, Andy. Um, yes, mate. Henning, not Andy. Yeah. Oh, here's the thing. Are, are the new pedals already part of the discount? Okay. Live research. <laughs> live, um... live research is the best research that you can do. I always, like Flanger is, is a pedal. It's like an, an integral pedal. Uh, essential pedal for your pedal board so if you're lacking a flanger that might be an option to try out um, especially at the price point and um well the phaser if you're into 70s styles also quite interesting and the question you are you are the the pedal there uh, be between the three of us have you tried some of the jhs3 series so far no but i know henning has 
Um, Henning, do you have any experience with these pedals? I do not. You do not? No. That's why I'm not commenting on them. <laughs> <laughs> I was just, I was just. Waiting. Also, before we went on air, Henning, or at least I said, I wasn't going to comment on these because uh, I wasn't made aware of them before they were released. So therefore, <laughs> as a gear review channel, I feel the word is miffed. The word is is no. bogged off. No, mugged off. That's it. Yeah, mugged off. I feel, I feel mugged yeah. off. Um, All right. But yeah, I would, I would argue, right? And I, I love some of the JHS pedals, and I quite like Josh as a person. But yep. I would argue there are other pedals for cheaper. That 84, have those... 8415 at Reverb, including the new ones. You heard it first. Yeah. So all JHS pedals are 15% off, which means a lot of them are still extremely expensive. But those new ones are 8415. <laughs> and uh, that's all right. the thing that I just said. Henning's Black Friday pick of the week. No, <laughs> it's because I haven't played them. <laughs> All good. So I remember vividly when we talked about the pedals uh, that, that uh, I brought up the point that these are white pedals out and I would love to see some like artist inspired um, painted pedals or even like from customers that, that like the pedals to, to kind of... Have you seen JHS designs? Yeah. They, are... they don't do that. Yeah, but these are white. So you can actually just like paint them yourself you don't have an ugly kind of scribble on it or something you these mean are just like those freaking ibanez guitars that joe satriani you know defaced i thought you wasn't gonna sp i thought scribble. you weren't gonna speak that was the deal you you promised you weren't gonna speak okay fine <laughs> also by the way if i don't yeah. respond to something one of you says it's because my audio is cutting out all over the place so if I, i'm not being rude oh, it's just I okay. can't hear you right now, for example. Oh, you're but I know being rude. Can, you so I'm you gonna, are I'm being have rude. To listen to this episode afterwards to figure out what you said. Rude. <laughs> uh, I don't know what the, the issue is. Maybe, maybe we can we can shamelessly uh, plug the the latest video that Henning did about uh, the deals that the big e retailers currently have running. Uh, actually, I very entertaining video. Sorry, Dan, I'm going to interrupt you. Um, remember when we said that okay. Henning was going to be on the show and if he didn't do a good yeah. job, we were going to replace him with someone else? Yeah. Do you have any suggestions? It's Perfecto de Castro. He's just joined us. There he is. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hey. <laughs> but I'm, I'm bombing your interview. <laughs> <laughs> Perfecto is going to be on the show in a couple of weeks' time, and I sent him the link. And I also said that that's the same link that we're using tonight. So do with that information what you will. And now Henning has thrown a little strawberry yeah. wobbler. <laughs> so some people get a higher episode number than me. Apparently, some people are worth even less than I am. <laughs> oh, perfecto. Freaking Bur uh, Asian I Kirk Hammett there. <laughs> Look at it! <laughs> wah 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 wah! That's all he does. Wah 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 wah. Uh, also, Poo Ninja says that Perfecto's video is perfectly clear. So, uh, Artie Smudge is requesting more presenters. Technically speaking, Nicole Millick still has the same link, so she could join us if she wanted to, and so does Jamie Humphreys. <laughs> <laughs> well let's see what the night still holds up for us so uh, let's see <laughs> yeah um well let's let's uh, perfecto how are you are you well are you in a good mood um i am doing fine um i had a little bit of injury last week but it's all good no. now and uh, i'm procrastinating that's why i'm jumping on your <laughs> on your live stream <laughs> <laughs> Well, everybody, if you're excited about what Perfecto has to offer on the 14th of December, you're going to get Perfecto from start till finish, possibly with a, a little taste of Henning halfway through. You never know these taste. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're just doing gear picks so. of the week, Perfecto. So um, unfortunately, there's no fuzz currently, but Dan's just picked a, the three series from JHS. Um I'm going to ask the people in the chat if they can guess what Dan's second pick of the week might be. And if anyone gets it, then Dan has to send them one. 
How's that, Dan? Oh. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'll give you, you a couple seconds. of seconds just to, to play that. Ten, nine, eight. What's the matter, Henning? Seven, six, five. Can you can talk if you want. I want Henning, you, no, you can't guess because you know what the... Oh, shoot. <laughs> Someone actually got it. <laughs> so right. <laughs> Uh, it's be it's because I accidentally showed it earlier. <laughs> it is the Ibanez multi tool. Dan, tell us why your pick of the week is the Ibanez multi tool, please, mate. Because I like them. It's a, a new collection of what's multi -tool. new about them? What is new? Tell the people what's new. Limited colors. We decided <gasps> that the multi the multi tool has become become a, a household name for a lot of guitar players and you know usually they come with red multi-tools but people have a lot of different colors for, on their guitars so we decided okay why not kind of upping the ante and introducing a couple of new colors this is not news it is news it's a new multicolor ibanez tool which is a great thing it's i love mine okay. mine are all red all but right. i never thought oh man if this was only pink yeah, but there are a few, quite a few people that collect multi tools. We're and they're scraping were... the bottom of the barrel of the news. Right <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. There <laughs> are people that collect multi tools. Yeah. Who? Plenty. People that need serious life upgrades. Come <laughs> on. Let's ask, let's <laughs> ask our guest within a guest. Guitars. Perfecto. <laughs> um, what do you think? Are you moved by this new gear release? <laughs> Well, if you have the pink Pia, then the pink multi tool is a no brainer. See? I mean, it's crap. It's all crap. But one couple wants to make There you go. It's it's a fashion item. So I see it as such. Yeah, like, like uh, oh. you know. Instagram, work on your guitar and then and then the multi tool like right in right in the focus, you know? That's that's what it's for. <laughs> yeah. I'll be that's honest, the more do. I look that's at this, the more I want them. It's not perfect. Thank that's you, what Andy. we do because we You're push welcome. companies as this product as this. But it's not what the average guy does. Oh look at my app and it's multi tool. No, that's that's just us. What? Okay. You'd you'd be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> I think so too. Yeah. For the record, yeah, I, you, I also the love my multi tool. I think it's it's one of the best things I use. And now looking at these pictures, the marketing is working. I've marketed myself. I've played myself. <laughs> oh no. But don't this worry, Dan's got someone Let's to not, Sarang. It's not gotta collect them all. Why not? It's a limited edition, so you can start there. This is actually... limited edition? Yeah. Are there like five of each? No, but they are like only produced for a limited, limited amount of time. How many? I don't know, like how many we order. But only for the course, it's like we call it spot production. So you you produce something for a limited amount of time, and then you don't you stop it, and then it ain't gonna return. It's <laughs> an Okay. Yeah. So, but it's fashion. I want one of each. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> Dan, can you educate us on the price, please? Are these going to be regular priced, or are they now special limited, uh, limited edition prices? No, the the carbon fiber optic is slightly more expensive. I think it's fifty cent more, or, or maybe euro more. But the others, they will clock in at the same price as the regular ones. It's just like limited edition. So for twenty twenty one, with these colors, and for twenty twenty two, we might have more. So no, it, it depends on how well they are doing and how people will receive them. Yeah. You've well, just sold lighter, of these. So, oh. so let oh, me goodness. get this straight. Instead of putting locking tuners on Ibanez guitars <laughs> as they should be, and actually doing valuable improvements to the line, Ibanez is busy picking colors for multi tools. <laughs> Way to place the stress on really what needs to be done, Ibanez. I mean, that's. That's really R and D place in the perfect location. Okay, I'm gonna shut up. Sorry, Andy. No, no, you that's, carry that's on. What, I'm with you on this. That's that's what he says, but behind the scenes, he's 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 much nicer. He's much nicer. <laughs> By the way, if anyone's just tuned in, Dan and Henning are in the same room. Okay, we've just done this amazing yeah. thing with technology where we've separated them to keep them uh, at bay from you know from being too naughty. But they are in the same same room. And I'm, ama <laughs> I'm amazed it took that long for that to happen. 
Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, me too. Oh yeah, I am amazed as well. So amazed am I, even enraged about it. <laughs> Yeah, we, we've got plenty of work to do tomorrow. Like, there's a whole pile of guitars right right behind that wall. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, not a good one in sight, but a whole pile of them. <laughs> oh, my goodness. He's joking, right, well, He's that's joking. multi-tool news. Uh, we should probably have a vote for the not next news. color. The next color. Uh, Henning, what color would you choose next in the limited edition Ibanez multi-tool range? I want the color where you fold it up and locking two that fall out. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I want. Perfecto, what color would you choose, my friend? Uh, Desert Sun Yellow. Ooh, nice one. <laughs> nice one. Nice one. All right. Matching Dan, with is, your, is your favorite color there? Um, actually, I, I would love to see some, some aqua blue. Not not like the pastel color, more like a very very like oceany color. Tritone sunburst. Oh, nice one with a <laughs> with a gloss finish. And know? then every Fender owner who has like an American Ultra with locking tuners, you know, they can buy that, and it's going to match the beautiful Fender. That's how we run. I don't actually know if those work on Fenders because I think they have different screws and all that stuff. So <laughs> I would like one really in bad. that. I'd like one in pearl, the pearl pit guard material, because then hopefully it would use up all the pearl pit guard material of the Ibanez stocks. They don't put them on their guitars anymore. What's wrong? That's a, that's the best thing about the AC twenty two hundred four TMP. Oh, it's disgusting! <gasps> it's disgusting. <laughs> It's. You sound like Leslie, and you kiss you like wish. her too. You, wi you wish I sounded like Leslie. Um, <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to say that so I could plug the video I've got coming soon, where I change the pearl pick guard on my AZ to a black one. Finally, when I get my pickups. Sacrilege. Yeah, what Dan doesn't know that is that I may, may also have painted the body. You never know. You don't know these things. What? Say Ooh. what? Not the twenty two or four T A B. Correct. Yeah, well, that F. one. F. F. Flame maple. Come on, get the facts right. Why would he paint the body on it? Nah, he's 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 joking. He's joking. Oh, uh, am him. I? Look at him. <laughs> yeah, he is. He's joking. Uh, we don't know. Yeah, we I think. Know with this guy, I think he's joking. By the way, if anyone's interested in the twenty two four twenty two or four T A B, I mean, is he from the first series? Spotless. Um, I. I, your audio's cut out. Oh, damn it. At, I, I <laughs> want... I want this... ...AB... ...buy this... <laughs> ...where... ...be ruined... ...want. You can get it for... ...minutes later. It's probably... <gasps> ...one on planet Earth, right? <laughs> Uh, can we right, please think, move uh, on from the Ibanez limited edition multi-tools <laughs> please for the sake of my sanity and the sake of the health of my YouTube channel and the people in the live chat let's move on to something else <laughs> Um, I've got to re-add Perfecto one second. Hang on. <laughs> this is far too much fun. Perfecto, welcome back. Sorry about that. Um, I'll stop at you there. Uh, Fender have, Fender Japan, I should say, have re released, I was going to say re-release, but it's not a re-release. It's a release of the Fender 51, which mm -hmm. you might recognize as the Squire 51, which had a humbucker. And now Fender Japan have got single coils so it's basically a tele strat kind of thing um and i dig it so hard i'll take hmm. i'll put it to the floor gentlemen may i ask a question no perfecto what do you think <laughs> I'm, I'm i'm trying to wrap my head around it <laughs> give, give me a couple of seconds okay dan <sighs> i like it it looks like a guitar that sting would be playing yeah. Oh yeah. no, he plays an yeah, acoustic yeah. sonic at every opportunity possible. Yeah, that's... 
that's <laughs> probably he's, he's, he's that's probably because he's getting some money for that but like that would that looks like a guitar for the for the sophisticated uh, want to be sophisticated uh, guitar player that wants to be different but still kind of gravitates towards the traditional vintage looks and that's kind of an option to kind of set yourself off from the rest i don't know i kind of like I, it but also dislike it i'm a little bit torn to be honest <laughs> well i think what's um putting me off is the pick card there's just so yeah. much plastic in there like you you don't need the the plastic extending up to the upper horn i don't think yeah i'd like to know what henning thinks i mean i'm, I'm surprised he hasn't joined in already henning do you have any questions <laughs> yes, I do. And it's a very serious question. And I'm not joking. <clears throat> okay, go for it. What is what is Fender Japan? Like, I would say knows. that nobody it, knows. Fender's Jap Fender Japan is the best Fender. Agreed. That mm. Absolutely expect. agreed. Fender is an American company. There's a Corona factory. They have Mexicans working in Corona, but then they have a Mexican factory. They have Coronans working in Mexico. And, uh, but what is what I don't know what Fender Japan is. Fender Japan is the factory that gets it right. <laughs> <laughs> Fender Japan a as Fender rep factory. Yes. Um, Fender Japan takes risks more so than anybody else. Yeah. They made yeah. great oh, yeah. jazz masters in the nineties. Um, it is or was a joint venture between Fender Musical Instruments Corporation, Kanda Shokai, and Yamano Gaki to produce and sell Fender branded instruments for the Japanese market. He just Googled that. And there's, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and there's two, there's that two of Wikipedia. Wikipedia. I am. <laughs> <laughs> so, so then, you there's didn't two know tiers. Uh, okay, who's on? You're on Perfecto, you. go for it. Oh, okay. There's two tiers, crafted in Japan and made in Japan. I'm not sure which is which, but one is just for the Japanese market. And the other one's for export. All right. Right. We are I mean, full from, of information from a legal, this week. From a legal standpoint, if you say made in Japan, then I think the majority of parts needs to be also at least like uh, processed in Japan. Otherwise, if it's mm -hmm. crafted or crafted, you can you can just you know take parts from all over the world and just assemble them. That's why so many companies in the U.S. kind of refrain from writing made in. And, and and do something like heritage uh american heritage or you know proudly crafted or something like that but made in i think there needs a a substantial amount of work needs to be done uh in in the particular country mm. what people are agreeing in the chat is that fender japan have the coolest stuff and perfecto yeah. was absolutely right when he said that I, I, fender japan can just take risks that other fenders can't um <clears throat> I think the pick guard, that's why I did this, it looks dragony. Looks hmm. clawish. Oh, ah. Claw you did that, I, th I thought you were trying to attack me, which is why I did that. No, 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 no. I would never attack you. Okay, you well, friend. Um, I, I, it was a fine time. Um, what Would you like to see the back of this guitar in case there are any surprises? Yeah. No, no surprises. Right. No surprises. Very clean back. <laughs> Andy, there was a question. There was a question. Is there a pickup selector, or do you have like two independent volume uh, knobs for for the pickups? That's a good point. I don't see one. I I, I was going to ask that. Well, what you should do is probably just research your news item of gear pick <laughs> before you actually put it on the screen. And if I'd done that, then I'd know that it has a U-shaped maple neck with a standard twenty-five and a half inch scale and a nine and a half inch radius. It's got twenty-one vintage frets. The thing is about those knobs, come on, Andy, come on. Uh, the thing is about those knobs, they're right next to the three saddle vintage star Telecaster Bridge with brass barrel saddles. Okay, also, yeah. he's buying time. Not, not the question. With nope, the he's vintage buying himself time. Uh, Instead, wait, 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 let me just, let me cut all that rubbish out. Instead of the traditional three-way switch and single volume and tone control, you get a three-way rotary control knob and a master oh. con volume control on the short vintage te style telecaster control plate that's rotary controls rotary oh, control that's that's, that's what prs did uh, and yeah it kind of that and it didn't, didn't work, work. that's horrible yeah, yeah. throw that thing away and, and that's, that's not a pick of the week <laughs> no i'm giving it that's that's for me the rotary controls for the win also that they, control plate looks almost as bad as the az i'm sorry that's horrible 
<laughs> it's less well endowed well, than the AZS. Yeah. Why would they get rid of the most useful knob for a Telecaster? Yeah. I I because mean you, they you never you never f around with with the with the switch with the pickup selector. That's the the integral part. Otherwise, you know, if you're on stage, you can't do the that thing when you're in the heat of the battle. That's impossible. Tried that, done that, doesn't work. Got rid yeah. of it. End of story. And who a uh, uh, relish tried it with a touch screen nice. control, yeah, and that was I, I. No, they had two dots, and you had to like gently touch the dots. Or if you wanted to have the middle, you have to you had to gently touch. Two fingers, like on it, the iPad. It just was horrible, <laughs> and it didn't work. Give me a freaking selector. Yeah. Don't put the selector tips on it that Ibanez does. Put good ones on it. The barrel. You know. <clears throat> just saying. Have you seen the selector on the Quest series? What were they thinking? But more on that in my video coming up next week. <laughs> Smooth. <laughs> Wow. Nice. I, I'm floored by your eloquence. Um, also, you're wrong about the barrel. That's that's the best. <laughs> <laughs> As you well know. Thank you to Rick for the super chat, by the way. The super sticker. He got some popcorn because he's obviously enjoying us having a little banter. Um, I'll be honest, with this pick of the week, there wasn't much going on. Um, because it's Black Friday, etc., and all other colors, or Green Friday, because I saw I saw a movie last night called Black Friday, and um, oh, right. it's like a B movie zombie movie with um, Bruce Campbell from Evil Dead, and it was wicked, but it was also rubbish, which is exactly what it should be. Um, I really enjoyed it. Yeah, I'm not going to defend that guitar too much, apart from the fact that it is. Henning, what would you pay for that guitar if you liked it? What do you expect Fender Japan to be charging for that in euro? To me, that looks like eight ninety nine. Okay, close. Anybody else want to take a a little guess? I think a little bit more, like eleven ninety nine ish. Perfect. Yeah, do you, I want agree. To go, do you want to go in the middle of those 12? two and get it right? <laughs> so it's nine nine nine. No, nine ninety nine. It's about a thousand euros. Yeah, when it conversion comes there you in. Go. Um, I love it. I dig it so hard, but I wouldn't pay a thousand euros for it. I'd buy it used on the used market for about four or five hundred if I could. I don't think you would find it for that amount of money because usually those I, limited editions from the Japanese market they kind of hold their value yeah. pretty well. I agree. Yeah, but what I'm up. saying is, if I saw it at that price, I would buy it at that price. All right. Okay. Good point. I bought. I'd be a do lucky I get a, boy. Do I get a pick of the week? What? Yeah, sure. <clears throat> I sent it to you, Andy. Oh God! You know we're, we're oh, already. You sent it me on Facebook. Oh, that's that's novel. Um, well, then you <laughs> you're gonna have to fill the dead air while I um. Oh my God! I didn't even need to look. <laughs> Did not even need to look. Um, is it is it PG eighteen what he sent you or? Put it this way, Henning does nothing that he doesn't profit from. Ah. <laughs> hey, pick of the week doesn't ah. have to be tolerated. That's not go. true. Henning, right. Henning does many nice things, just to get that clear. <laughs> just a few. Henning, what is that? That looks oh, let amazing. Let me tell you what that is. Um, so if you are a musician, you need this, period. Good. Done. Good. Do you want to actually tell people yeah. what it is so that the audio listeners can know what you're We're talking podcasts. about? We're oh. podcasts. People, people actually listen to us. Uh, what if we on, just refer to it as this? This, yeah. And then I don't make money. I see. And I don't look so greedy. <laughs> um, I recently released earlier this year a drum programming course called Complete Guide to Drum Programming, which Andy and Perfecto both love to bits. Um, Perfecto even talked about it on a mountaintop true story uh and i then said how can we make it even more awesome -er -er -er? and we hired felix lehrmann world's best man with a mustache uh to uh, he plays for the martin miller band and he's better than martin miller on drums and uh then uh he he sits on the drum kit and he plays groups or parts and then i say how do you do that and then he slows it down and we look at it and i transfer it onto the grid in in the drum pro in the drum editor and together we try to find rules and methods to get 
the realism and the groove and uh, the swing and uh, what what he's doing on the kit into uh, rules to do in drum programming. Okay. It's probably the most in-depth groove course you will find. The first one that we're releasing is called Classic Rock Drums or Programming Classic Rock Drums. And uh, there's six cameras on him. You can see every single detail. There's 4K slow more shots. There's everything. So Dan, you need. about these multi tools, right? So they're pink <laughs> and <laughs> they're graph. It's a really good course, and the thing is, it only comes in one freaking color. <laughs> it's not limited. Yeah. You can buy as many as you want. I am extremely proud of this. It's extremely good, and I'm not saying that because I make money on it. But on that day that we recorded that course, I got 25% better, and I was already pretty good at the drum programmer ring. All right. It's I blew my own mind that day. I was like, oh my God, all the stuff I didn't know and I thought I knew so much. Question. Yes. And maybe that's a game. Like how many cameras in total did you use for the whole project? Not that many. Uh, uh six, seven, eight, eight. Wow. Okay. Because okay. I'm sitting of two base and I'm only I only needed one. All right. Yes. Question: How many how many new cameras did you use? <laughs> At that point in time, I had one new camera. That I had two new cameras. <laughs> uh, we have a super chat from Cheddar Kong Power. Hello, Dave. It's nice to see you. You <laughs> asked, when will Henning make a yacht rock drum programming course? Henning, <laughs> in what is there money to be made? In what yacht? Yard rock drum programming course. I, I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I, I thought that was an inside what, what joke you... with you and Dave. Sorry, that's just gone straight over my head. Um, Dave wants free pizza. There, that I, that I can connect to. That I understand. That's nice and easy for someone like me. Is Dave? Is Dave? Is Dave on the weed? I don't know. He could be in one of those places where you can be. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. He might be on the marijuana. Ooh, um, <laughs> sophisticated joke. Nice one. Apparently, yacht. We're going to sound like idiots now. Apparently, yacht rock is a thing. Yeah, ro yacht rock is. Uh, I learned today that clown rock, core is a thing. <laughs> What's perfecto? Thing, can you educate us a little bit? Clown core is a thing. I'm glad you said that. Okay, perfecto. What is it? Yeah. Soft rock. Soft rock. Yeah. Ario Speedwagon. Uh, oh, yeah, Stevie yeah, like, Dan, if, Christopher Cross. If, da Dave's if you like Dina well. Colada. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, course, yeah. The next course that's coming out is uh, 80 studio drummers. So that's along those lines. Yes. <laughs> Porcaro? Maybe, maybe there's still a chance to kind of rename it. We have Porcaro, Steve Gatt, uh, Kenny Aronoff, Phil Collins. Uh, those uh, 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 Stuart Copeland, we cover all that stuff. Nice. Can we get, can of we go back to the multi tools now? Certain aspects. <laughs> you don't want me to make any money. Do you? <laughs> also, I'm educating people like no one in the world about how to program drums in a realistic way so that Glenn doesn't have to bitch about program drums. You're doing Andy a is, service. Andy is against education. No, no, that's no. what he's doing. He wants no. to talk about multi tools, not educating people and making people smarter. And he is pro dumb and con education. I don't think I'm, so. I think I'm con you. I sent you the thing about clown core, by the way. <laughs> oh, God, stop sending me stuff. We're actually in a chat together. You could just say it. <laughs> yeah, but I can't say a link. <laughs> I'm not gonna, what do you, what do you want me to do? Watch the video in during the podcast? No. Like, <laughs> oh, you could, but all I'm saying, you, you were interested. I, as a friend, because apparently for me, you know, oh. now you used to. Oh. Yeah. Sorry, that was Henning <laughs> the friend, not Henning the destroyer destruction of my sanity that we're you know that the professional that we're talking to right now hey, it that was wasn't my friend me who waited 55 episodes to invite my friend okay it wasn't me <laughs> if i had a podcast wait i did yeah that's the point what by the way what happened to your podcast i've, I've never i never was filled into that let's uh, uh let's do uh, by borrow burn shall we <laughs> let's do that yeah let's go yeah sh should we do that I oh i've accidentally deleted the by borrow burn video do oh, oh dear <laughs> 
we must not going well no today. About it. We buy the course. I'm sorry. There's no other no, way. The course, the course is absolutely not part of the option this week. What do you mean? Definitely not. Not unless I'm getting a cut. And unless, if I'm not getting a cut, you're it, not having it. Illegal, it's digital content. Buy, borrow, or burn. <laughs> you can't borrow it. That's illegal. You can't burn it. It's digital. So the only option is buy the damn course. Yeah. Buy the course or I get out. I leave. I leave right, right now. Screw yeah. this. We're, screw this. We're having the bloody multi tools back. <laughs> I don't think you can burn them because what are they? They would, they would melt. They there you would. go. They, yeah. they would. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> this week, picks of the week. Yeah. We've got the Fender Fifty One from Fender Japan. Who are they? Nobody knows. We've got the new limited edition Ibanez <laughs> Multi Tools in uh, dual blue, which is purple, metallic pink, which is pink, and number three carbon fiber pattern, which is carbon fiber. We've also got the three series JHS pedals, the new ones, which, if I remember correctly, is a hall reverb, a flanger, and a phaser, and some shitty little drum course so um <laughs> the best investment in your future is clearly the drum course i am going to guess dan's okay and then we'll 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 play a little game like that somehow i'll guess i'll guess, I'll guess dan's first i think dan is going to buy the drum course because everybody should there you go henning fix that Thank you. uh i think he's going to Borrow the pedals okay. because he's curious, and I think he's going to burn the fifty-one Fender. Oh no! Yeah, Ibanez, no, no, Ibanez tools no. are in his desk somewhere, no. so we don't need to talk about those. Any, any, anything close? Yeah. No. 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 Oh, oh dear. I think I, I, I probably. I borrowed the course from Henning because at the moment I have no reason to kind of program drums. I, I'm, I'm buying my little. Getting it. I'm, I'm, I'm buying my daughter. You buy a, the damn course. A drum buy kit. Right now. I want to see you buy it right now. <laughs> Go to the website. Buy it right now. All right. No. So, <laughs> I. You know what? Here's the thing. I'm, I'm, I'm buying my daughter a drum kit. So I need to, not to she program can learn from drums. the course. No, 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 no. She needs to learn it like from scratch from a real drummer and not a programmer. You know. And Felix is a great drummer, but it's not a learn how to drum like Felix course. It's like it's learn how to program either. like Henning based on how Felix is playing it. So I'm borrowing the course. I'm burning the pedals because I'm not really the pedal guy. What but if what if the pedals okay. had Perfecto's face on them like that? Well then then they are they are they, then they would be a day one pre order, a dopo. Hang on, then I'll day go on I'll go on the whole pre-order. reverb. There you are. Right. And then we'll <laughs> Yeah, there you we'll, go. I tell you, we'll stick another one over there just for good luck. Ooh. I'm going back. The Perfecto JHS uh, 3 Series. <laughs> okay, See, I'd buy I'm going to get rich. They spark, they spark creativity. You can put stickers on them and you can paint them. It's just like, that's cool. So you're going to borrow the course, Dan. <laughs> you're going to because I'm not you're gonna the burn the pedals. What are you buying? Yeah. You can't buy the multi tool, so you're buying the Fender. Uh, actually, no, no, no. I, I've got them in my desk, so so that's out of the equation. Actually, I, I think I, I, I'm not buying the Fender. I, I don't. Okay, I'm I'm buying the fucking course. Do it right now. I am. Um, <laughs> Actually, uh, give me the money. I'm I'm, I'm bor- <laughs> I don't have money with me. I'm bor- I'm borrowing the Fender just to see how the quality is because usually the made in Japan Fenders they are pretty good, and I like those quirky designs. But I, I'm still a little bit torn if I like it or not, and I will just burn the pedals because my pedal board's already full. I've got no no space for them anyway, so. Those would be my picks. <sighs> so, <laughs> so uh, shall we do it like in circles? So Perfecto is kind of guessing what Henning would do, or sure, why not? All right, come which on. of the Perfectos am I talking to? <laughs> oh yeah, uh, what's the, who, who's the real Perfecto? Me. Uh, uh, me. We are. <laughs> I am. Okay, Henning is going to. Um, Borrow the fender. Uh, I'm just gonna buy a hundred of those multi tools in every color. <laughs> I see what you did there. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know. I don't know if he's gonna burn anything. Can't burn the course because he's in it. You know what he's going to burn? 
All the money is running with the drumming course. Oh, there, there. Okay. There you go. There you go. That's that's my guess. Thanks, Dan. <laughs> You're welcome. Just, just to find out, it, we're making fun of the course. 55 episodes of this guy pushing Ibanez and pushing Ibanez and saying Ibanez, Ibanez, Ibanez. No one's making massive fun of him. But I, I once say, hey, by the way, here's a product that's actually better than any Ibanez you've ever owned. And I get made fun of. But Henning, the, the thing is, Dan, Dan doesn't say buy Ibanez. Dan says, here are some Ibanez products that exist. Do with that information. Here's a course that will. exists. <laughs> All right. Buy it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, by the way, I vote that we have three perfectos in every show from now okay, on. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold amazing. on. Oh, oh, are you reading tea leaves? Since, since we are uh, self-promoting. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? Hang on. <laughs> perfecto de Castro mugs. Nice. Because everybody, t-shirt, which, which, I, which I which I have and wear. He also has practice a great makes perfecta. Yeah, I have that shirt. No, no. Um, I have to wrestle it from <laughs> every member of my family who likes to wear it. Also, so that's how good that shirt oh, is. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it has the Ferris family uh, badge of honor. Yeah. I, I'm um, not saying you. I'm not saying you should buy it. I'm just drinking from it. <laughs> Damn you! Everything tastes better from that mug. <laughs> right as we're doing self-promotion oh come on <laughs> well, if everybody else can do it why can't i do it my bloody channel we're on my bloody channel and I, look, hang on I'm, I'm there i'm in the middle now because i'm the most important for this section um <laughs> Is anyone in, still watching this, by the way? I wouldn't. Henning, we've had more viewers in this episode than we've had for the past six episodes. <laughs> um, anyway, in this box are four new Guitar Geek merchandise, which are limited to four, forever and for always. And they are made by SJ, who is the wife <laughs> of Fergie in France, who's in the chat. Um, wow. So these were sent to me, and you are not going to believe this. They are going to be on sale, but the money is all going to go towards charity because Henning, that's the kind of person I am. And I'm just going to unwrap them just here. What? Sorry, don't talk over. Don't talk. Don't talk over me. Don't. That's, that'd be rude. You, you, the world is not ready for this. Um, it's coming towards Christmas. You need some way to decorate your Christmas tree. What better way than an Andy Ferris guitar geek Christmas tree decoration? <laughs> oh wow oh, charity's man. gonna be so happy about wow. that the hair i think is spot on. that's a lot of hair look yep. at these aren't wow. they phenomenal okay. now i say there are four available there's that's only three because i'm keeping one um how much well i thought we'd do it on a bid um so i don't know how we're going to operate that yet but um i think that's that's worth a lot of anybody's money for charity what charity, charity don't tell me it's going to kids <laughs> I feel slightly uncomfortable telling you where it's going now. Kids, huh? No, Kids it's going to a. Sorry. Kids with like some kind of illness. Uh, yeah, the illness of not being alive. Uh, the the charity is Sans Charity, which is the neonatal charity for, for babies that were not quite born and didn't make it into the world, and is very dear to me and my family. I'm just going to watch Henning whilst he squirms a little bit over this now. <laughs> um, yeah, sorry for that, mate. But that's where the charity is going to. Sands, um, I can't remember what Sands stands for, it, but it's very dear to me, or my, my, my family, I should say. We're going to raise as much money as we can. Henning is now going to buy one of these. <laughs> I was going to anyway, but it's supporting the mothers? Um, it's actually supporting... Uh, the families, the mothers, of course, the yeah, yeah, the, okay. fa the families and everything to do with what happens when your child doesn't quite make it into the world. And I know this podcast and they're taking a very serious moment, but let's do it for a second. They're great. They help my family a lot. And um, my family wouldn't be what it is today if it wasn't without this organization. So SJ made these and... They've got a guitar on the back, and you need them. I will put details of how to do this in every one of Henning's video for the next six months. 
So, yeah, I, I think they're funky. What do you think? Oh, yeah. Lovely. Lovely. The hair is spot on. It's scarily good. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I think it's Henning's ch chance to pick my picks of the week. I'm sending you money for my ornament. You don't I haven't know how told much you the prices yet. It's a bidding thing. Oh, they're not ornaments, <laughs> by the way. They're they're frown frownaments. Fro fro there we go. Oh, Hang on. Thanks, wow. Val there, Valeria. Saved my butt once again. Um, Tomfish, it is I, I not don't... my real. It's not my real hair, although it looks like it could be. I'm thinking <laughs> limited edition for 2022 because I've learned from Dan. Limited edition real hair for ornaments. Um, Ooh. yeah, I'll I'll put them. I don't know how we're gonna auction them off, but some some way. Um, yeah. All right. Well, once mine, I just sent you money. Did you? <laughs> and I don't. I don't even have a Christmas tree. I'm not allowed to have a Christmas tree in my house. That is an episode unto itself. Ryan Burke is now sending me stuff. What the heck is going on? <laughs> can't, he can't have my ornament. That's mine. He doesn't have the, the chat link. It's a video of him and me at Henning's house. And I am not sharing that publicly. Um, <laughs> <sighs> What'd I get here? Uh, uh, oh, Henning, you need to choose for me the picks of the week because then we got to get on to um, the main subject of the week, which is interviewing okay, Henning. Okay, you're going to burn that guitar because it's ugly and has no locking tuners. Um, right. You're going to obviously buy the course because you can use all the education in the world, um, especially on how to invite your friends earlier to your podcast which you're not being taught in the course, but you should be. And um, you're going to borrow the multi-tool just to check if like, it handles differently in a different color. No, but I like your thinking. For, for, for science, just for science, I'm going to burn the multi-tool to see which color burns the best. And if when they burn, they burn with a different effervescence. Um, but just for science, okay? Not because I, I dislike them in any way, shape, or form. I think they're brilliant science. What? What? Are they scented? <laughs> scented? Scented? <laughs> like the one smells like grape, one smells yeah, like absolute, pink, pink abs grapefruit. Oh, okay. No, uh, absolutely. Sure. The carbon smell. Yeah. The carbon, like, you know, maybe oil or something like a nice <laughs> no, you know, of mechanic course not. shop. Of course not. Because then when you burn them, you'd have like, you know, scented multi-tool. That would be good. No. No, I'm I'm into no. that. Okay. Right, 2022, Dan, make it happen. Yeah, uh, I'll, I'll make a note for for the lineup in two years. I'd buy the Fender <laughs> Henning, but only about 500 quid. And what's left to borrow? I borrow the JHS pedals for a little go on them. Yeah. The what are we, What are you going to do with the course? What course? <laughs> <laughs> you You do know I already <laughs> sent you the links for free, right? You already ho You already have access to the course. <laughs> I. I conveniently forgot that. But when you say free, it means I actually have to do something with that free link, um, such as buy some more popcorn. Yeah, go and make a video about it. Learn some. It's a really, people, it's a really good course. <laughs> That's why we're able to to mock you, because it actually probably is a really good course, just like the first one. Yes. Yeah. And Felix is cracking, so yeah. This one's even much better. I've heard, I've seen the trailer. I've heard some of the sound samples. It sounds amazing. We're doing that thing where we try to anti-market it. That's what I'm doing. You see, anti-marketing it, which makes you buy it. Ah. Uh, who's left? Perfecto. I got to No, someone's got oh, a yeah. guess for. Perfecto. I got. I got a guess for Perfecto, right? Yep. Okay. So Perfecto, um, you are not the guy to burn any instruments. So I would suppose you would buy the. Fender borrowed the pedals and the multi tools. <laughs> 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 
But I, I actually think I already sent him the link. Yeah, that's well. that's the point. Like you already got you already got the, the the drum course, so there's no point in that. Yeah. So yeah, no, <laughs> you you probably buy another multi tool because you're a man of style and fashion, and you burn the pedals because you already have a vast collection of pedals. <laughs> man of style and fashion. <laughs> I'm a nurse. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah that's that's pretty close because uh like the pedals i'm i'm not a big modulation fan and i prefer to play dry <laughs> I've, I've no <laughs> come on Mr. come on <laughs> there's a brand new wah coming out by the way which is absolutely amazing and uh, I hooked Perfecto up with the uh, video for it. So, because <laughs> they said, who's good for why? I'm like, no one better than the Asian Kirk Hammett. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, I knew exact. Well, actually, it took me a while to realize that that was the reason why you, you sent me to those guys. <laughs> and then when I did, it's like, ah, oh, damn it. But he's right. <laughs> did, did they send you 15 of them? <laughs> It actually is several in one. We were yeah. not going to go, but it's actually pretty, pretty cool. Yeah. All right. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, I would have a punt at that, at that fender. Um, just, you know, just to see what it's like. Um, buying it since Dan says that it holds value. You know, if, if I don't like it, I can easily flip it. So I could be 500. That kind of works. <laughs> Good deal. 500, 500 in one of those fronaments. You got a deal. Oh. Ooh. Ooh. And is mine in the five, yet because and, the money is out. And 500 more for your charity. When you, when you, thank you, Perfecto. When you say you sent me money, do you mean yes. you sent me a PayPal thing that I now have to yes. check live on the show, which requires. Yes. Me to do Just something. making sure okay. you got it. Don't tell people what it is, because I want my ornament. Fraudament. <laughs> What's weird is that you can say it and I can't. How weird is that? Fraudament. Fraudament. No, I can't fraudament. say it. It's a Christmas fraudament. Um, fraudament. <laughs> I have an I have an idea, gentlemen. What about Mister Gugu Ibanez multi tools? <sighs> oh, what is he talking about? Gugu motifs on ah, I have an in now because the new uh influencer relations lady they, they change people is actually good. Okay. Um I will have by the way my own line of Mr. Gugu uh stuff coming out. Oh wow. Um <laughs> it it's all gonna be animals with unicorns and stuff, uni noodles, all that stuff. <laughs> um but uh that could be they have pillows now, which are but ugly. That's why they're on Leslie's couch and she hates it. <laughs> I have a pizza pillow. Beautiful. Um, check my Instagram. Uh, Ibanez, Mr. Google. I mean, like a multi tool with a cat that throws up a rainbow. Something like that, yeah. Perfect. Nice. Yeah. And it smells yeah, and, of and, rainbow. <laughs> and if you flip one of the tools, it, that becomes the tail. <laughs> That's a good one. I like it. We'll sell so, three of them. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're all gonna buy one. That's four. Yeah. <laughs> also, Andy, Andy's gonna buy one. The um, Andy Bungert. Um, definitely got that name wrong. Oh dear. Andy Bungert um, sounds very German. Yeah. Yeah. German. <laughs> uh, okay. Well. Wait. Um, wait. Excuse me. Because what? now I'm sorry. We talked about it. We talked about it. What? I don't what? know. Just gonna see if I have it. What are you doing? Pitching the idea? The uni noodle. I don't think I have it. No, oh, okay. Damn it. Oh, no, no, don't do that. No, no, I, don't plug don't your it. bloody t shirts. Right. Uh, Fergie in France <laughs> is the husband and um, part time joiner of SJ that made the Fronaments. And he's got a video about the Boss Katana, which is a floor version where he took it out of the amp and made it into a floor amp. And you should all go and watch it because it's brilliant. And I've seen pictures of that. I, I wish I'd thought of it first. Might rip him off at one point. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, um, I don't know really know how polite way to do this, but I perfecto. I don't want to give them all the perfecto yeah. in this show, so I want to yeah, keep. So I want to. I want to keep was, you for the fourteenth. Is that okay? I was gonna say. I, I was gonna say. I'm gonna get back to work now. 
right. enough procrastinating. <laughs> <laughs> well, I look forward to chatting to just one of you on the 14th of December. Um, <laughs> it's like Mysterio. You don't know yeah. who the real professor is, right? So yes, texting me about I'm getting rid of that one. I'm getting rid of that one. There he is. Oh! He knows I'm in the podcast. <laughs> Bye, Perfecto. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. We will see Perfecto again on the 14th. Okay. But um, we're going to give Henning his guest pre-roll and then talk to Henning. How about that, Dan? Sounds great. What? What? So, I thought we're done. The man, the myth, the person who is my friend or used to be, Mr. Henning Pauly. Welcome to the show, episode fifty-five. I find possibly one of the best numbers you could be on. I mean, why fifty? One through fifty-four, pointless shows. Fifty-five. <laughs> now we're talking. Does that make it better? Did I fix it? Damn it! If it had been forty-two, I could have forgiven you. Because then you would have said, well, we wanted you to be on 42 because blah, 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 blah. 50, this is just a useless number now. This is just an, I feel like an afterthought, which is fine. I, I'm not an important person, but I thought in your life, I held a little bit of a more important place in your heart. Well, but I wanted, to wait and, I wanted to wait until you'd released a second drum programming course so that we could push it. <laughs> That's the real reason. Timing, timing is crucial. <clears throat> That's just, yeah. you know, he's a pro. He's a pro. You, you'd know that if you bought Henning's course. So, Henning, Dan, <laughs> we are here to talk about something that I'm not, I've had, dear viewer, dear listener, I've had severe trouble um, connecting <laughs> myself with today's topic. <laughs> it's not a disclaimer, it's the fact that I'm either dumb as hell or I literally speak a different language to everybody else right now because I have no idea, I had no idea how we were going to approach today's subject tactfully. So I'm going to pass you over to my co-host and dear friend, Dan, to explain it. <laughs> it's very easy. Everyone lies. Oh, <laughs> no, that's right. never always, <laughs> it's always lupus. Anyway, Dan, what is today's, <laughs> what's today's subject? Please help me out here. <laughs> yeah, we, we went with why do everyone loves gearless um, because uh, throughout the course of the week we kind of stumbled across a couple of last week we stumbled across a couple statements from uh, reverb and from youtubers that kind of claim that guitar x is sold x times and guitar y is sold y times and we kind of you know since since you guys have some sort of behind the scenes knowledge through your affiliate program for your contacts with business partners and i have some some insights as well from the sales perspective uh we kind of came to the conclusion that that all of these lists have one in common you got to take them with a bucket load of salt and that was a point where we kind of where we came to that or into that discussion where we thought about okay why do those lists even exist? Like, what's the value? Why are they out there? Why do people seemingly gravitate towards those lists and like those? Why are those videos clicked all the time? I think it's it's one of the clickbaitiest thing clickbaitiest things you can do to kind of do some sort of list. I mean, even in, in television, you've got like the top the the charts like top twenty songs from the nineties. These are the most boring shows, but I love so many shows. people are what. Yeah, yeah, there you go. So many people. I also this. have to yeah. stick around. Uh, I mean, I, I think some of the reasons is that you stick around to at least number two to say, well, that's not number two, but that should be number three. And well, number one, that's never number one. But it's kind yeah. of in the vein of the greatest guitar solos of all time, et cetera, et cetera, or greatest guitar players. Yeah. I mean, Henning and I, we, we, we I, I can speak for both of us when we say you have to do something to get people to click your links. Yeah, of course. I mean, <laughs> you can't just do the visuals. You got to give some. You can just put a content. photo of yourself on there. Yeah, you're right. But no, um, no. but yeah. Um, I before before we continue, I'd like to sort of misquote somebody, and that is the marvelous Jack Conti, who is or was the CEO of Patreon, and part of the band Pomplamoose and the artist Jack Conti, and he said, paraphrasing now, that when you're creating content and creating. Uh, also art, uh, and then marketing that art, that you've got to decide what your passion is, and the line that you're not willing to cross 
that and then everything else is just packaging so i've really d sort of stuck by that recently about loving like doing things that i love to do and then thinking well i'm not going to go as far as saying like i love fuzz pedals for example so i love doing fuzz pedal videos but i'm not going to ever say this is the best fuzz pedal in the world because that's crossed the line of i don't believe there is such a thing mm -hmm. but and then i might write when the next fuzz pedal comes and you like that more then that's the best exactly. next fuzz pedal and exactly. all of a sudden it's and that day you play a different fuzz pedal and it's a cool fuzz pedal. You're really having fun. All of a sudden, that's the best fuzz pedal. You do that four times. I don't believe anything anymore that you're going to say because you're just going to say it's the best thing all the time. Exactly. So that's why yeah. I said I wasn't. I wouldn't say that. But you could have a video that says, "Is this the best fuzz pedal of all time?" Volume. Well, three? then it's a question. Yeah. It, come on, that's the same. That's the same thing. That's. I know. The magic. I'm just saying. That's... I'm just saying. That's a line I won't cross. So that's. Um, yeah. That brings us to today. The the topics of these top guitars and top pedals and stuff. Also, I'm not above doing one of these top lists. I'm not looking down on these lists. I have some favorite pedals I've been stocking over the year that I might even do a favorite pedal list. But it's my favorite. You're not favorites. above doing a top list. Did you say you're not above doing a top list? <laughs> what i heard <laughs> so when you asked why we had to wait until episode 55 there's your answer <laughs> <laughs> we had to That's wait right. until dan was physically in the room with you so that you can delve out punishment <laughs> in case it's necessary um yeah i'm not above doing these own. lists i have <laughs> and even adult <laughs> I have some favorite <laughs> pedals of the year, but that's my favorite pedals of the year. It's not necessarily yeah. what I'm saying is the best. Um, and that's, the, that's the video series I once did. I did my favorite overdrives, my favorite uh, uh, delays, my favorite. There was no my favorite. Maybe there was my favorite fuzzes. I don't know. I think it was an empty video. Empty list. <laughs> <laughs> but I did Please my do, If you haven't done that, do that. <laughs> <laughs> the shortest HP video ever. But the favorite. thing is for people like us, <laughs> There can't be a the best because we don't have all the pedals that came out during the year. We don't have all the guitars. We have a certain part of what re was released during the year. So I would never say it's the best of anything because I literally I don't have the new JHS pedals. I can't say if one of them isn't the best something that I've ever played. And yeah. what is best? That's the biggest question. Yeah. I mean, to some degree, some 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 of these articles kind of determine best by oh, what's that? So we have a artist merge. Henning, this is important. I've been told by his boy Spencer that he loves your hoodie and he has to buy him one. Well, then go to Henning's video and use the promo code HP. 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 Anyway, sorry. C continue. No, all good, all good. Uh, that the question was how to qualify best, and I think uh, some of the articles kind of use uh, sales metrics as some part of to determine what is best but uh, we discussed this already uh, before the show i have quite quite a problem with uh, for instance the reverb article that states um, or that that claims to determine what are the best sold guitars and then everyone from our bubble of the guitar world is kind of referring to that article when there are so many like integral problems with with such a with such a list and uh, that that it's it's it isn't even worth like the the paper or the the digital paper that's that it's written on because it's it's so arbitrary unless it's an ibanez of course because no, then, the, then the metrics not, are completely true no 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 no, no 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 not even not independently from from the brand but it's just like you know i come from a statistics background and when i see that someone is kind of um how they claim they claim uh, the total order count so they uh, they reflect on orders from brick and mortar stores. They reflect on orders from used guitars, and um, like the the reason is there's so many wrong about such lists that that I have a hard time to even even read that. I don't I don't I can I re I can read it I can digest it, but it's it's really hard for me to to even determine what is this list good for. Um, let let's let's do this. You talk about the specific thing on Reverb, which I think we can talk about what sure. Reverb claimed. Yeah. Yep. I'll be the reverb guy. I'll okay. be the 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 voice of the opposite uh, of, right. of opposition. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> so now here's here's a, one one of the main parts where I have an issue with is that reverb is um is not referencing any serial numbers. So one guitar 
can be sold multiple times. And that means, and this is a, a problem because it, it's kind of a distortion, that let's let's take a, a guitar. You have a lemon of a guitar. It's a very bad guitar. It's like a Monday production. So it's really bad. So one guy buys it on, let's say, on a, on an, on a brick and mortar shop on Reverb, has it for two weeks, hates it, resells it as a used instrument on Reverb. Another guy buys it, hates it, Again, sales on Europe, this guitar, it's getting flipped four or five times and this counts as five sales. Are five guitars being sold? Of course not. It's the same lemon that's been sold, but ultimately it will rank very high in that in that hit list. And this is something that's just, it's wrong. It's so wrong. It, it hurts. So, But okay, you're calling it a hit list. First of all, Andy doesn't know what that is. Yeah, like a chart list. It, it, like charts. a... a, a <clears throat> So here's what I did in preparation for this, this afternoon, I called my friend at Reverb and I threw these things at him. I said, what's it with these numbers and your lists and <laughs> you're claiming, I mean, Reverb says the, 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 the PRS Silver Sky sold more than any US Fender, all the US Fenders combined. And he said, no, 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 no single, single based. So they have the series. They say like Fender Player Telecaster ah, okay, then any or the American player, okay. or Affinity, Affinity Telecaster. So here's the thing. I fully trust what he says. They're making statements about their numbers. Mm -hmm. And those numbers are very likely correct. Absolutely. No, no, no one no is doubting that. That, that they have no interest in fudging the numbers. No, not um, at all. So, and then I said, well, what if, what if the same guitar, what if the same Silver Sky sold three times? I mean, mm -hmm. someone might buy it from a brick, brick and mortar, so especially the Lunar Ice or whatever, mm -hmm. and then flip it for more money. That counts as two sales. And he yeah. said, absolutely, we can't account for that. But I think the danger is not in what Reverb's doing. Reverb is saying, these are our numbers. Of course, yeah. The danger is if then someone goes and boasts themselves with those if PRS, which they're not, was going to go like, look, our guitar sold more than anything else. Mm -hmm. If PRS were to go saying, we have the best uh, signature model sales of the year. Uh, wait a second. On reverb, and you have to consider resales, which they're not going to do. They're going to say, we have the best selling signature guitar. They're not going to say, where, resale, blah, 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 yeah. what country. So all these factors are important, but then of course companies go and they present that stat because they're very, very happy. Uh, Robert Keeley, dear friend of mine, great guy, does a lot with Reverb. He does a lot with Reverb, which is why probably people buy his stuff more than on Reverb, just like Chris Jupiter sells a lot on Reverb, more than probably, you know, Chris is involved with Reverb, sells a lot there, more than Boss is, which mm -hmm. means that he's probably percentage wise for the size of his company rather high compared to boss. But Robert does a lot with Reverb and his Compressor Plus, I think, is the best selling pedal on Reverb. Now, if he then goes and says, look, we're the best selling pedal, that of course is good advertising for him. But the Reverb stat only says his pedal is the best selling pedal this year. Doesn't say anything about how these stats came to be, whether it's uh, used, resold, whatever. But of course he is very proud of it and post this on social media saying, look, we did a good job, but is, I think it's what the companies will do with the, with that stat, especially when it comes to reverb. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's no other information because they use it as advertising. Mm -hmm. We did well this year. We have the best selling pedal. Um, same with any other list. We made it to the best of list, best of list. What? Mm -hmm. Who made the list? How is it quantified? And I think that's what we're talking about, that these lists need. You need a lot of background knowledge. You don't know if one of the Silver Skies was sold seven times and counts as seven guitars. Mm -hmm. Not saying, by the way, that it's a bad guitar. I hear it's a very good guitar. Yep. But well, that's like, kind of you, why you... we're here, isn't it, Dan? It's, it's, we're talking about how to interpret this information. And what you Correct. just said, Henning, yep. is, is a company can take, anyone can take any numbers and bend them to their truth. <laughs> and that goes for any subject in the world. And we've obviously, um, we've all been subject to that over the past two, almost three years now, <laughs> that numbers can be pushed to anyone's argument. Um, yeah. So so with the reverb sales, exactly the point, we don't know how many guitars were sold. Was it one? Was it five? We don't know. But yeah. 
the point is how you interpret that information. And if someone then takes that info, as you've said, Henning, and uses it as a marketing tool, somebody on the customer side could be misinformed. Yeah. And hopefully, I mean, I hope that especially like the, the media and the journalists are not just picking up that information and kind of copy and paste what, what has been said. I, but I, that's exactly what's happening. That, that's that, exactly that is the point. What's yeah, happening. That, that is exactly why we're talking about that, because that journalistic duty and kind of skepticism towards... Duty. He said duty. duty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what's, being, what's being presented by others, there's no real, like, judgment or re-evaluation of, of that, that data. And, uh, I mean, we talked about several other points. I think you brought one very important point up. If you take a small company that heavily relies on a, a third-party platform like Reverb, it is, for them, it is much more important and also much more in terms of the, the percentage of their sales that are being realized on Reverb is much higher. So, basically, their pedals will have a higher share of, of the overall sales but it doesn't necessarily reflect the the actual market because other brands, let's take, we're in the pedal segment, let's take JHS or Boss. They have a whole infrastructure. They have distributors. They have dealers that they work with. So then they don't heavily rely on Reverb. And I mean, there's no right or wrong. That's their, their business approach. But Reverb is only reporting a fraction of what is actually going on in the market. But Reverb doesn't need talking from the side of Reverb, Reverb doesn't claim anything like that. No, 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 no. Reverb sure. just says, these are our numbers. Yeah. It yeah. is then how a brand, which is, of course, proud of being in those numbers, yeah. Yeah. goes and communicates that. Um, and if we, I mean, I don't know how far, far we, we, we would, I mean, at some point, we're going to go there anyway. Um, <laughs> <clears throat> some... Uh, uh, Let's let me see how I can phrase that without getting into real trouble. Um, <laughs> do, we need, do we need a little a little break, a little uh, a little moment for you? Or are you, are you good? We're, we're good. I'm good. Um, okay. So uh, last year, in on one of the lists, uh, the Ref G20, I think, yeah, the G20, uh, I think, was on top of the list, and I commented and I said, "Well," and, and they were like, "Oh, look, 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 we're on top of the list," and you know, the list was the best amps in the world right now. And I had a problem with that because that's, that's a massive statement. That's a very dangerous statement. The best, whatever best amps is, but if you say the best amps in the world without giving any price range mm -hmm. or the best amps in the world right now with the eye out, which of course, actually at that point in time, it probably was one of the best amps in the world. Bang for the buck, fully agreed. But without any other qualifier, the best amps in the world that came out in 2020. Okay, um, you look at the list. It was a suspicious list, and th they were of course very happy that their amp was on top of that list. So they took that achievement and published it and said, "Look, our amp." And they were all happy. Our amp. Uh, the two notes posted it, and Rev posted it because both companies have a stake in this amp. But then I looked at the list, and there were very low budget amps in there, some of which I have tested. And in my own evaluation of the amp, it's it's nowhere, not nowhere, nowhere near best, not even in its price range. Mm -hmm. But if we if we were to say best amps under 500 bucks, yes, of course, throw it in there. That company that also won, I think, spot number six in that list uh, did not boast with it, didn't post it anywhere. That happened, they were there. And I said, well, it's kind of weird because that company was advertising on said page. And it seemed like a lot of the big advertisers and banner advertisers were part of the list. Some of them were not. Rev, for example, did not advertise on the page. Mm -hmm. So either they threw it in as a alibi amp or they threw it in because it generally is a good amp. But it was a weird list to me, given that during that year, Soldano came back. Mm. Soldano was bought by Boutique Amps Distribution. They re-released the SLO 100, a beast of an amp, a classic of an amp, and any list of the best amps in the world right now, released in 2020, uh, that doesn't have a Soldano on it, that doesn't have a Friedman Twin Sister on it. I get it. They're more expensive amps, but we're talking about a list that says, here are the best amps in the world. What's absent from that list 
are amps from that company who makes Soldano and Friedman. And what's absent from the page is advertising by that company. So we're um, back to the guitar magazine old formula where a guitar magazine would review a product and then lo and behold, the next page is a full page spread ad for that product. I, w I would never claim that any of those companies called them up and say, look, we're advertising with you. So no. you have to put our amp in the list. If they did that, then of course they would boast with it, which they didn't. They, uh, I would never say that. Um, and Alternatively, Henning, it could have been someone who was an intern or someone who was just putting a list together, <laughs> didn't know that someone like you or like us, because I was also pretty passionate, is so passionate about this because that's what we do with our time. We we define these things. And when someone puts through a list of the best, and not that we disagree with what the best is, it's always about the ethics of how that's put together uh, and these lists. And again, that data being interpreted Um you in particular are extremely passionate about what's right and what's wrong and that was questionable yeah inviting me as number 55 wrong <laughs> very so right. passionate about that shit so right <laughs> uh, I've got a comment from music a comment from music therapy last who says today's industry journalism is mostly hype marketing and some good info and why people have turned to youtube and influencers like you guys to get better info uh, thank you. I'm going to take that as a compliment, but also don't forget that there are some people on YouTube and other platforms that will take money for positive reviews. I will 100% say really? I'm not one of them, and neither is Henning. Yes, don't wind me up on this. <laughs> that that's a whole other conversation. That is another conversation. I just wanted to bring it up. Don't you know? I guess we should have maybe called this um, this episode something like "Be careful what you read" or "Buyer beware" or, you know, "Don't be Let's dumb." Let's go or, back to or... what you said. I think it's very important. You said it could be an intern who wrote that, who yes. uh, naively said, "Oh, I like these," or who naively said, "I like those three amps, but we need seven more." Who's advertising with us? Because boss yeah. said, "Let's do that." Um, yeah. <laughs> we. I'm not saying that any of the advertisers forced them to. No. But. It's a business. This guitar page, we're not saying who, is a business. And they want to make sure that the advertisers are happy. It's, it's just very blatantly obvious when I'm going to say a name, and I love my guys from Fender. Okay, I love those guys. But when a Fender LT25 practice amp, which is a decent practice amp for 160 bucks, is on the best amps in the world right now. There was a, I think, the ID Core or something from Blackstar. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying these are bad amps. I'm saying they belong on. I'm the saying ID Core they... is not a good amp. I've said it. Say it again. I, the ID I Core cannot, is a bad amp. I, I can't. I don't know. I haven't played one. That's not fair. It's not fair. Uh, I should delve deeper on that. It's not as good as Blackstar say it is. Sorry. So my point is, oh trouble, Andy. You in trouble? <laughs> Screw it. No, I'm you're in. in like I'm in heat, it. But I mean. <laughs> oh god this is why i didn't want to do this shut up andy <laughs> okay moving on i'm going to save you so the point is if there was a list of best practice amps in the world right now number one spark no question about it but obviously there's the yamaha and there's the lt25 and the, at some point i don't even know does ibanez have one no probably not and if it wouldn't it wouldn't even be good so <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't have locking tuners. Okay? Yeah, no, no, no. no. So yeah, there you go. All the, I, I got to make a confession. Ibanez does not produce a single amp with locking tuners. Well, you should. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing. They're going to come up with an amp and it's literally going to have locking tuners on it. Still, most of the guitars, not. <laughs> that was so, so funny. They had, so the, the they had the Tone Lock series, which technically is locking tuners for pedals. Yeah, that's right. Can we move on? So the point is, <laughs> if there was a category you started of it. best practice amps, yes, I'm fully with them. But best amps in the world right now, giving all amps that came out in 2020, um, here's a Fender LT25, no Soldano. I'm not saying the Soldano is, I mean, it, 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 I mean, come on, it's a freaking Soldano. Um, but it was just a weird list that suspiciously looked like a lot of the, not all of them, but a lot of them were advertising on the page there was two victory amps uh, i think there was a what are the not corn corn something not cornford the other one 
Cornford. Yeah. One that, no, 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 one that Harry has. Cornell? Cornell, yeah. Which I don't think they, they throw a lot of advertising money. But again, it was just, I got very upset because it didn't look like a an honest list. It most certainly didn't look like a list that considers everything that's on the market right now, whether they advertise with them or not, whether they wrote about it or not. So my question is, whoever made the list, have they played all these amps? Have they, have they played more amps? Have they played some high-end amps? What were their criteria? If they put the LT25 on there, mm -hmm. which again, as a practice amp, I think is good, then right, it made the list because we like this. We like the price point. It's a good entry-level amp. And uh, we think a practice amp should be on the list. Yeah, but there sure. was no qualification. There was just, this is one of the best amps. And as a consumer who doesn't, who maybe just started playing guitar, who came into this relatively naively, they look at a best of list. And all of a sudden, here's an amp from Victory 4,000 bucks, and here's a Fender LT25. And the LT25 is number two, and the Victory is number four. Wow, that must be better than a Victory. And without actual why they made that spot, and the list is pointless without explanation. If you wrote articles, they would be novels, um, but they'd be very well <laughs> researched. And I see your point. I review. Uh, I don't. It's what I do. Exactly. I, I'm not at all defending that article, but I think we should move on from it because we've kind of gone around in circles now. And I want to say something. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right. There, there are a number of blogs around the internet that keep releasing. Um, best overdrive pedals of September or best fuzz pedals or best amps, best guitars. And I have contacted said blog, sorry, and asked, <laughs> do they play those pedals? And they quite openly said, no, but they were the ones that released this month. And that he made my blood boil. He didn't play. <laughs> yeah, but that's pick of the pick week. That's a prediction. It's we're not saying it's yeah. good. It's like, yeah, that's, that's funky. That's cool such okay, as this good. drum drum plug programming course that we've never tried. I've never seen this podcast. I have no idea how you guys do things. <laughs> well, this is the first episode. We've asked you on as our first guest. Oh, um, thank you. I'm honored. Premier. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> My point is, <laughs> the point I'm making is the same as you, Henning, that there's information out there on the internet which where some um, newcomer or some com some parent even of a, or, or whatever is going to buy someone for some something for someone who is totally uneducated, they're going to see these best of lists and they're either going to buy something that's not right for them or they're going to do something worse, which is argue something on the internet, just like we're doing, that certain pedal is better than some other pedal because it was number one on a list. And that's never going to change. The, the gear pages and stuff like that. And now Facebook is never going to change from people arguing about the most pointless stuff. However... I don't like it when organizations add fuel to that fire. And one of the reasons I started my channel was because I felt that there were too many organizations um, just giving away information because it made them money. Um, and yeah, we, Henning and I both get paid for our videos, for our time and, and for our good looks, but certainly not for our opinions on the product we review, right? Not all the time. Well, for you. Well, if it, <laughs> let me let me jump in here. Of course, for your opinions, but not for being like you can't buy have, that opinion. Yeah, to have a, a yeah the opinion is not for sale. Opinion that's already set in stone. But I think, especially from from independent YouTubers, one of the best parts in collaborating with them is not just to receive a video that you know can promote the product if it's good, but also to get very valuable feedback because you guys are most often among the first to kind of get your hands on one of those products. And we had issues where, where there's, there was stuff that needed to be fixed and it got fixed. And I think that's a very valuable part. But um, when it comes to, to kind of facilitating stuff, to kind of generalizing stuff, I think it's those kind of lists are also some sort of shortcut for a lot of people. Because like you said, yes. a beginner is always looking for help. And if there's a video that says, okay, the five best overdrive pedals or the five best acoustic guitars or whatever, then this is something that they they take as serious information. And this is the point that I wanted to make is that uh, media, YouTubers, and, and everyone who's kind of creating content should be 
aware of the role that they have that they should not be that they should not act like a demented parrot and just repeat on and on what's being said or being published by 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 uh, parties that have like a business interest or, or any any other kind of interest to push or promote their product and instead kind of do their own research and maybe reevaluate the information that they get and then recreate something from that and and you know let their own let, let it sink in and then let their own opinion play a role in what they pick so i think this is this would be something where all of us could just highly benefit from if there was if there was less copy and paste and more read think and then you know let the others know what your opinion is about that and, and how you see things absolutely but not just you my, know, re my yeah. fear is that um every time that i release a piece of content in which i have which features a product which is almost every day imagine if a brand new guitar player someone who just has that spark of saying guitar is the best thing ever and i'm going to not pay attention at school and i'm not going to watch tv and i'm not going to go see my friends i'm going to invest my time in guitar and then they somehow get filtered through this piece of false information which says this piece of crap guitar is the best thing you can buy right now and that puts them off playing the instrument forever that's something that goes through my head every time I do a video because we are responsible for the future of guitar, even in a, a small amount, whatever that amount may be. Um, you have to take it seriously. Uh, Thank you. Uh, let's I, I, I illustrate. It. Um, <laughs> let's take another side. What if we right now we're saying people are not necessarily looking critically at those lists. Mm -hmm. Now, what if you do what we are doing, which is looking extremely critical at something um, and projecting our criticalism <laughs> onto the video and therefore saying it's unbelievable. So um, without, this is going to be difficult, I'll try, without naming names or brands, let's assume there was a video, the five best guitars in 2021, and it was made by a store, it could be any store, okay? Many stores make videos. Now, obviously, what you as a viewer have to know is, A, they will only show guitars that the store carries. So they're not objectively the best guitars in the world. They are the best guitars in 2021 that released in 2021 that we carry. Okay, but obviously, hopefully, the viewers know that. Do they? Not always. A lot of viewers watch YouTube very naively, and sometimes they're not even very aware that they're watching a store channel, even though it's the big logo is right there. Um, I, I, I'm pretty sure that's, that's how it is. Mm -hmm. Then uh, you know that they try to sell something. So when I watched a video in question, I was like, yeah, look, uh, of course, three, three out of five best guitars are guitars only they carry. Why is that? Well, they say they're the best guitars. You can't buy them anywhere else. Obviously, this is, they pick those because you can't buy them anywhere. And this is, this is just a big ad. Well, duh, A, it's a store video. Obviously, it's an ad. Anyone thinking anything else um, is, is any video, on, most videos on my channel are an ad. They're just an ad with criticism, okay? Uh, yeah, buy the AZ. ES, whatever ES stands for. From my affiliate link, uh, yeah. From my affiliate, I, we all make money, he pays me for it, but I will still say it would be better if it stayed in tune, put luck into <laughs> it on it! You know, and, and the thing is, he's okay with it, because hopefully at some point the Japanese listen and then we have better guitars. It's still so Henning, bad Henning you, have, you made a few phone calls today, is this the point yes, where it, you can share some information with us? And I called the company who made that video and said, it's a little bit suspicious that three of those instruments are not in-house brands, but brands you only carry uh, for a large area. And I said, enlighten me, who picked them? Was it marketing? Was it sales? Was it the presenters in the video? Because that makes a big difference because they had those instruments on their laps throughout, throughout the year. And if they said, oh, those are instruments that we remember and we actually like them. And at the beginning, in the discussion that, that I had with them was, we do clarify very clearly how to quantify or uh, qualify the video. 
you ca- best is only in the title. And I think that's my pet peeve that it says best guitars. How best? All guitars were under a thousand bucks. Clearly, there are better guitars out there for more money. Um, they said there were guitars that created a bit of a buzz. Absolutely. Bit of a buzz where? Obviously, from their point of view in their bubble, mm-hmm. which is a big bubble, big store, they have social media. But if I wasn't part of that bubble, some of those picks don't reveal themselves to me. Why did they pick that? Well, you know what? I wasn't in the bubble. Um, a Fender Player Series, was a, is that the best guitar this year? You had one, I have one. I don't think it's the best guitar, but it was much talked about. It's a decent value. I would never call this the best guitar of the year, but they're fully right in saying it, it created talk. It was a talked about guitar and uh, they, they're not bad at all. So it's doing it right now. They exactly. So they said the fact that three of them are carried exclusively by that store is a coincidence. I'm like coincidence, schmo incidents. <laughs> but then they looked I didn't at know you spoke French. I did lo- uh, it's a little coincidence, a little more incidence. Um, <laughs> but then they looked at previous year's videos and told me what the best guitars of the year were. Mm-hmm. No guitars that were exclusive in all the other years. Mm-hmm. And then I'm like, oh, you know what? I was unfair. I looked at the video. I was critical. I wanted to say they did this to advertise stuff to me you can't buy anywhere else. Why all of a sudden would they pick three in-house brands or or, or exclusive brands when they didn't do it before? That's too suspicious. So maybe my my suspiciality of them uh, was 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 wrong. Maybe that literally they just like those and they looked like great guitars. Um, It's just possible that they really like them. But that's the thing. We look at those lists. And we say, those are not the best guitars. If they had called the list, guitars that stuck with us, guitars that we remember, um, guitars guitars we really liked in 2021. I, would you have a problem with that? I wouldn't. Zero problem. They can put, they can mm-hmm. put anything in front of the camera. It's that best label. Problem is, then, that gets you clicks. Mm-hmm. Then I need to refer That's to what I said baby. at the beginning yep. about from Jack Conte about don't overstep what you that line that you won't step over do things you're passionate about the rest is just packaging. Is it down to the viewer reader listener to say oh best of that's not really a best of it's just a list of guitars that have done x y or z in this year. Which is by the way what they're saying. Some of them are in there because they've done big sales numbers some of them are in there because they were talked about a lot which of course puts those two guitars on a completely different level. Sure. Um, but they're in, the, they're in the same best video. So it's, yeah, it is up to the viewer to say, ah, it's not best off. But you know what? I'm going to be an ass. A lot of viewers read best. They think best. Mm-hmm. If I made that video, I would say my favorite guitars 2021. That's the difference. I, That's the difference. Because I didn't play all of them. I didn't, I, I have no idea. I didn't, I didn't play all of them. And you know what? One of them might actually potentially be an Ibanez. Maybe. <laughs> Could be. Maybe. That's why, as I said, I, I'm not against making these lists. And I, I even still plan to do some before the year is out because I've played some amazing instruments, pedals, amps this year. And they are my favorites. And people that watch this channel kind of care what I think. And Henning, the people that watch your channel very much care what you think because why else would they watch? And I mean that as a compliment. Um, uh, they are uh, they are entertained, but also your channel is very much um, trustworthy to the point where people say they hate your channel because they don't like the truth that you speak, and therefore uh, you have a huge responsibility. This. We've talked about this a lot. I get called a paid chill hmm. quite a bit because people know I'm being paid for videos, and I say this in my videos. I mean, I'm more than open about it. And it really hurts me because we've talked about this at length. We don't have to go into it, but I've lost a lot of jobs because I won't take the job because I see that the company wants to put words in my mouth. I'm like, we're not doing this. Big companies, I'm like, go away. We're not doing this. 
It's I'm independent. We want to see the video before it goes out. No, you're not. You can want it all day, want all day long. You're not going to. Um, so I've lost. It's it's a it's a huge interest of mine to stay independent and to be able to say what I want. And if I want to sit right next to Dan and bitch about locking tunas, I need to be able to do that and still be friends. Um, but then I make the honest video, and then people write under it, "You're too critical." <laughs> What the truck do you people want? Do you want the pay chill that says everything's great to give you an I to, Of course, they just bought the guitar. They want to hear from me that it's the best guitar in the world. If you bought an instrument, don't watch videos about it. You do it all the time. But then you come across someone who's honest and he's telling you you could have bought a better guitar and then you're pissed off. Small alert. Watch the videos before you purchase the guitar because otherwise you're just looking for justification why you bought the guitar. And then you get mad, and then you get mad yeah. at the reviewer when yeah, it says course. it's you, not good. You people, yeah. you people are the worst. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> I'm really sorry if you don't want to hear that, but I every time I get a and it doesn't. It's not like it's people that watch it just to justify the purchase. It's people that watch it just to justify the purchase, hear something they don't like, and then leave a comment. A, about my hair or something just to try and, and you know upset me you people are the worst the worst amanda and uh, valeria they're the worst just a just a point at some people okay horrible <laughs> horrible human beings um i don't know um michelle's kind of okay so um yeah on the one hand they don't want to pay chill and they call me a pay chill all the time which really hurts then you make an honest video and they don't want that either but in in a here are my favorite uh, uh, I know that's what I was going to say. We have a position where I'm pretty sure you and I we get in contact with more instruments than Dan does. Dan yeah. is playing Ibanez all day long. He's in an Ibanez bubble. He has no idea if a guitar should have locking tuners or not. He doesn't know. <laughs> doesn't even know what locking tuners look like because he's in the Ibanez place. You know, <laughs> he's, he's never seen any. But. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, it's just you it's such an easy target right here. Um the AZ's A Z E S things up, I don't know. It's fine. It's Is red, that, it's got Henning, would that be the Yamaha A Z E S or the Ibanez A Z E S? If we're if we're really picking on details and attention to those details. <laughs> to say. Moving on. So um, <laughs> um nobody knows what you're talking about, Andy. Um, nobody. Nobody. So moving on. Um, but sometimes companies uh, say, hey, what do you think about this thing we want to take? We want to distribute it. We're interested in picking this up. And they actually will send me instruments. They don't want a video. They just want to have someone look at it that has a lot of instruments in different price ranges in their hands. And what often happens, actually, more than not, is uh, people will blow smoke up their bums. Because when you're talking to a distributor, you want to be nice. Nobody yeah. critiques something. So I just talked to the distributor from, let's say, Lemon Amps. Okay? And <laughs> we don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> lemon Amps. Yeah. And um, I talked about the new amp that I re reviewed that was very honest. And he's like, I know I can trust you because you're not going to... Uh, Bull me. I'm, I, it's so difficult to be on You're your channel. You're really doing well of editing yourself. Um, <sighs> thank you for this. <laughs> so you're not going to, you know, do the thing with the, you know, bull poop me. Um, there you go. <laughs> yep. Um, <laughs> um, I have this new brand that I might want to distribute. Can I send you the guitars? Then he told me what the brand is. I said, oh, I've got four of them that I couldn't make a video for because they were total bull poop. Oh, um, I know what those guitars are, yes. Yeah. And um, he said, yeah, these are a little bit newer. They, they fixed some things. Can I still send them to you? And he did. And I looked at them. They're much better. So we're still having talks about what needs to be improved. But they trust someone that they know is honest. To some companies, um, you know, it might be a thorn in their he's side. Down, he's if... down there. He's not over there. He's down there. <laughs> Oh, oh, right. There. Yeah, this guy. Um, <laughs> when someone continuously harps about stupid locking tuners. But on the other hand, if he needs to know if something is really off with a guitar, then he knows where to send it because he knows I'm not going to bull poop him. Yep. Can we from Dan, now on Dan just, call thoughts, just Let's just stop him for God's sake. 
Dan, thoughts? <laughs> Appreciate your input, Henning, but also... Well, know. shut up. I, yeah. I couldn't agree more. That's, that's, that's a good point. I mean, you don't... If you, if you want honest feedback you send stuff out to the to the youtubers that rely on uh if you just need uh confirmation that your product is the greatest uh, and latest and everything then you know then probably henning's address and, and your channel is, is probably the wrong place to send stuff but on the other hand um and i hope i don't derail or digress too much uh be careful when we talk or, or talk about certain channels or the big e-retailers that, that post videos because for them it's business so they have a point they want to sell through their videos you know you guys you want to present stuff you want to give recommendations about products and it, provide some guidance so you benefit from you know affiliate programs etc but at the end of the day mm. cr your cr your uh your currency is credibility yes very for, much so. for a retailer, their currency is turnover. They they want to make euros or pounds or dollars, so they do video, they make videos to sell immediately and to sell what they have. And this is also the reason uh, to go back to to the top videos. <coughs> they will not promote what they don't have in stock because where's the point in promoting something w that you cannot buy from their side? So it's I I totally understand that that there is that business perspective and that they do things like that, but um, I don't think that's the sort of information that your audience is necessarily looking for when they when they check YouTube and, and, and check certain videos for products. They want reliable and, and reliable and, and truthful information from your side. They want to have an opinion. They want to have your take because all of that is subjective. And uh, also, you and for instance, Andy never complains about some of the Ibanez guitars not having locking tuners. Because for him, it's not a priority. Let, let me Andy. clarify. Yep. Let me clarify that because the guitar that I had didn't have an issue with the tuning. Is yeah. that because Henning's did have an issue and that's a one-off? Is it because my tuners have been tuned so much that the very polished uh, finish had been worn off, so it gripped a little bit more? Is it because uh, I just play guitar more skilled than Henning does? Who knows? We don't know. It could be any one of those things or a different thing. But what I will say is that, Dan, if it did need locking tuners, I would have said it. Yeah, sure. That guitar, I and that's the, that's the danger of only watching one channel or only one reading one magazine or only, I don't know, working for one brand. You don't know what's going on outside of that bubble, as Henning said and earlier. And only having one girlfriend, you know, big yeah. danger. Rock and roll was never about monogamy. But I mean, I, I think Andy is making a point, not just not just mahogany no, 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 ma ma mahogany <laughs> rock and roll was never about mahogany <laughs> i have to sit this way because <laughs> then i'm facing andy oh there oh. you go yeah <laughs> so the point you're making is don't just subscribe to his channel also subscribe to andy's channel and then you're you're kind of set up right actually subscribe to andy's channel twice yeah especially if you don't like any of the videos make sure to really ensure that everyone is getting your point across Hit that dislike button twice. Good idea. Yeah. Um, you have to make sure whether the channel you're watching, and both of them is totally fine, is doing demos or reviews. I am a stickler and a getter pista offer <laughs> at channels that say we review when they don't, when they show the product. When they say, he's gone. When they say, I review something and they don't bitch about anything. I mean, sometimes you, there's nothing to bitch about, but they don't turn the treble all the way up. Okay. A review is doing a critical something of everything. Um, a demo, for example, Andy Martin from Reverb, <sighs> brilliant guy, clearly says, I do demos. It's I called Andy's. He does his own channel, Andy's Demos or Andy Demos. There's okay. no. It's called Andy's Demos. It's a, in the on name. On Reverb, on Reverb, he's only going to demo something because Reverb wants to sell things. Why would he make a video on Reverb where something sounds bad? And if it's demos, he shows the good sides of the pedal. If the pedal has good sides, that's great. You know. Um, he can't make it sound good if it doesn't sound good. There is no faking it. What is going on here? 
But um, so I just read make... a, a comment from Rick in the uh, in the chat that he would like someone to do a review of this guitar, and someone probably should if they'd had it for eight months already, maybe maybe more. <laughs> Sorry, He's I tried I, so hard to get his point across and then this happens. Demo versus review. This is what is it's extremely... like being with you, Henning. This is what it's like being Demo versus with review. You. It's extremely <laughs> important, is my point. Um when a channel says reviews and demos, what is it? Are they showing you only the good sounds? Yeah. Or so what Andy and I do is we review. I always make sure when I talk to a company, when I write an email, I use the word review and I also say I will be critical about your product and I will critique it if critique is necessary. I have upset no email. less than four companies in the past three or four weeks um, and spent a lot of hours having to justify the fact that I released a video with some criticism in it. Um, I spent a day justifying your criticism. <laughs> Henning, Henning worked really hard to, to get justice and... Some a few people made mistakes. We don't need really to go into it, but the point is, I will not re release a negative video unless I feel that that's the information that the public and my viewers need. If everyone, if if there, if some small builder sends me a pedal and it's not very good, it would be evil of me to release a video and say, "Oh, look at this rubbish pedal that someone made." Absolutely. That's just pure evil. But if a company mm -hmm. is releasing a pedal that many people are hyped about, or there's lots of positive demos about. Someone, if I feel that's me at that time, needs to needs to put a point an opinion that isn't the same as somebody else, and that's what I've done, and I've upset a lot of people recently. Um, and we can't yeah. bend to a company if it's if it's Fender, if it's the biggest company in the world, and we're like, ah, oh, we really want your business. We have no business if we bend to those companies I, if I we have no integrity as, as dan said earlier um I, I, I will name credibility it, is uh, our currency that's that's a good one bose is a big company Thank you. i could be the nicest guy to bose <laughs> what was it what i just said thank you dan said thank We're you kind. i said you're welcome ah sexy bose is a big company it would be very easy to be the nicest guy to bose and say everything's great and then take their money and make videos for them and i reviewed their l1 something system which I, is, I think is a decent system. And I made a mistake with one setting in the video where I played the guitar modeler. And they said, ah, oh, we don't we don't like that. You said it's not so great for guitar modelers, but you didn't set it up right. And if I made the mistake, then I have to own the mistake. So yes, I took the video down, which we very rarely do. I re-edited that part. I re-recorded it. They sent the system to me again. I re-recorded that part, but because they pointed out the functionality that I misunderstood, I learned a lot about the system, a lot more stuff. Video became 10 minutes longer and a lot more critical mm -hmm. because I now found out what the real problem was. So they wanted, they didn't want to have a better video. They just wanted me to look at that aspect honestly. I did, found out a lot of stuff. Video became a lot more critical, technically showed the product in a worse light. But that was then the video I released that they right. paid extra for because they made extra work. <laughs> so it doesn't matter how big the company is. Look, my first guitar was an Ibanez. My second guitar was an Ibanez. My third guitar was an Ibanez. I am in my home mecca right here. And yet I will still tell this guy to put locking tuners on the guitars. Yeah, that's a guitar I have because it's got locking tuners. Is is there a reason you're holding that guitar, Dan? You went off to get it. Uh, I fear that you no, want to no, bring it up. No, I just, oh, you just... I, I just, I just felt very comfortable with that. Uh, is it? Might, might you, also it looks like you needed that... a weapon. That's all. Yeah, yeah. I, I just feel more secure with uh, locking tuners on that. Oh, side. everyone does. <laughs> <laughs> dear, dear. I think um, <laughs> Henning, you've been doing this a lot longer than I have, and a dangerous part for me when I was uh, still danger, but the dangerous part for me was when I started earning money from doing what I do from YouTube reviews. And, <laughs> no, I did. and I was doing a job, I was basically doing th two full time jobs, plus being a dad plus doing all sorts of crazy stuff. And companies were offering money for me to say things they wanted me to say. And at that point, that's when I really had to say, Andy, what, why are you doing this? What is, you know, what are your beliefs? What, are, what is that line that you're not willing to cross? And 
when you have to put food on the table and you're working your bum off at two well youtube is is more than a full-time job and i had a full-time job um i don't know how i made it through i mean i have morals and that's for me that'll always be the moments and that year of my life when i thought okay i've got through that no one is ever going to tempt me with money with whatever people might tempt me with uh free fuzz paddles i don't know um a ps5 would be nice but my point is that i think that that i see a lot of youtube channels that are regurgitating information to try and get the clicks because it is so hard now i would not want to open up a youtube channel in 2022 as we're coming up to because of the saturation and if anyone's listening or watching this and you have a YouTube channel and you're getting near somewhere where you want to do this professionally, then stick by your guns. It's it's going to be hard. It's going to be slow. Okay, I thought I'd get picked up on that. Uh, it's going to be hard. It's going to be slow, but... Too easy. Too easy. Yeah, it, it's as Dan said, I think credibility is the currency is, is the thing that I would actually summarize this episode with because it it should be for everybody unless of course the retailer is is you know sales is the currency money is the currency um well the big question is if you could be bought yes then my argument is then you couldn't be or then you wouldn't be because at the moment yes for a little bit you could be bought you could be saying it's all good it's all good people will pick up on that they will find out that you will say everything is the best in the world. Yeah. Then they will stop watching. If they stop yes. watching, nobody wants to buy you. That's the point. So what I what I tell companies is my viewers come first. Yeah. Because without the viewers, you wouldn't even be talking to me. So if the viewers go, I have no value. If I lose the viewers, I have no value to companies I can't charge for any videos. If I lose a company that I don't work with, and I have many companies I don't work, I don't work with for certain reasons, um, then I'm okay. I can lose a company. I will still make money without others. So therefore, I can say no locking tuners, and then we'll figure it out somehow. But <laughs> if I didn't have, I mean, Dan likes me. I know he does. But if I didn't have any viewers, I'm just some guy to him. I'm relatively useless, except for funny jokes. So the viewers have to come first because any channel that gets found out about you're being paid you're not being transparent about it um you're just peddling stuff on us and everything's the best they might survive up to a certain point some at some point the bubble's going to burst mm -hmm. people will see through it and there are there is a channel that made videos about channels that he grew up with and thought, these are my heroes. I didn't grow up with YouTube. You didn't. But kids grew up with YouTube. And they had their heroes on YouTube. And at some point, this kid found out, wait, they sold me stuff the whole time, but they never said it? And started making violent videos about that because he was very hurt about being not being transparent, them not being transparent about it. Um, and he lashed out. And you can think of whatever you want about that, but I don't want that to happen to me. So therefore we need the transparency. Um, without the viewers, we have no, no value. Nothing. Can we, Dan, can we get your take on that as a, as a person who pays people to make reviews of Ibanez gear? Yeah, of course. Um, actually there's, there's nothing wrong at all about what Henning said. I think, uh, I mentioned that previously that your credibility and integrity is, is the main point. Also for me as a company, because I don't want to work with someone who's uh, some sort of yes sayer to 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 everything. You know, I appreciate diversity on the channels. I've I like if uh, YouTubers like you or like Henning have worked with several companies because then um, you know they are not kind of pigeonholed into being like the ha 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 guy or the ha ha guy so they you know there's a lot of diversity going on in the channel and i think this is important also to get different perspectives on things and for me i mean you made the point that you wouldn't be you wouldn't be important and uh i know that for a lot of companies they don't really get what social media and youtube is about that might be the case um but also if you're like a smaller channel and you need to you know bring food to the table i think 
once you start selling yourself off that's that's like the the start of the end already you know that's like yeah. that's really Find the beginning way. of your yeah yeah it's it's like your channel is just because at at some point somebody will will understand and they will get that you are that you've been bought and there's there's nothing behind that and uh, I, I mean up to this point there are still a, quite a few channels out there where it's pretty obvious that what they do is still very blunt promotion you know and and so i see it in a very critical way because i i like to stress the importance of social in social media and i think the social aspect is being a a, uh, a person with integrity and having a fan base that relies on you guys um because even if if your channel is rather small if you have if, if you have a, a fan base that uh is 100 percent behind you that's even worth much more than if you have a million subs you know and they occasionally watch that viral that one or two viral videos that you put out that are maybe funny but there's no real added value to me as a from from the company's perspective and like i said i need I need the advice for me it's it's just a part of the puzzle overall puzzle to get opinions to get reviews also to get the message out for instance that there are some guitars with locking tuners yeah, that that one. i have that one it's a good guitar yeah there you go but um no 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 just to, to make that point it's part of the overall marketing mix and um i think it's an integral part it's 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 as a company social media is a must because the old ways of, of promoting your stuff are gone um but we want to be compliant with what is good promotion and what is honest promotion so um if if a company doesn't understand it and want want to buy you or want to buy henning i think they are missing the point of what this all is about but there's a lot of companies that are really missing the point yeah but you know but it's social media it's not like it's not i pay you for I pay you for your opinion to say this is the best guitar you ever played. I pay you for your honest opinion to tell people, okay, this is maybe one of the best guitars in this year's lineup because it's got locking tuners, it sounds great, and you like the finish. It's one but... of the best guitars in this part of the room <laughs> right here, on that side of the... No, but you're, you're getting the point. Yeah. I, I want your opinion, and if, if I am behind the product, I wouldn't send you... Like, for instance, um, I wouldn't send you a product that I don't like. If there was a guitar that's part of the promotional plan uh, or that needs to be promoted and i'm not behind that i would not feel comfortable sending it to you i love this one so much that i didn't charge you for the video and said can i keep the guitar instead yeah. and uh, I, I play it and it's it's freaking awesome i couldn't put it down but the point is you did it afterwards yeah there wasn't any agreement i mean there i played go. the guitar i'm like yeah. i'm not letting this one go how can i keep it yeah. let's yeah. find a deal yeah. it, one, something i want to say to the viewers is the best thing you can do, and I'm, I'm not kidding you, is make the channels that you know you can trust as strong as you can make them. Have your grandma and your grandpa and all your friends go to school, have everyone subscribe to the channel. So Andy and me, for sure, and some others, perfecto. <laughs> Why? Because the stronger the channels are, the more power we have. At some point, a channel will reach a critical mass of viewers so that whether you like what they have to say or not not being on that channel is just not a good idea a lot of the big channels either don't even deal with gear and they're great channels and the people want to be on them but they can't because they don't do gear but some of the bigger channels might not be the channels to actually get honest opinions from if you find the honest channel my uh, goal was always to be uh, top gear because top gear i have zero interest in cars it was super entertaining the banter between the guys was good exactly like what we're doing right here beautiful banter um <laughs> but it was something you wanted to watch and they were so big 320 million viewers worldwide that even if they pooped on the new see what i did i was going to say shit, but i didn't say shit. i said don't poop. say shit. Uh, if they pooped on the new BMW, they still got the next BMW because being on the show and being critiqued was still better than not being yeah. on the show. Yeah. So the more power we have, and I'm not saying that because I want more subs, I'm saying it because I want more subs, um, <laughs> is the more powerful we are, if you can trust us, the more 
power we have with the companies. Then we can just say, okay, you pay us something, but you're not you're not telling us anything. Which is already when you say are. when you say power, Henning, I think that also includes the viewer. The viewer owns a part of that channel, in essence, mm -hmm. because when you trust that that YouTube or that that entity, um, when you put your trust in with your money, when you purchase you're not just giving power to the YouTuber who could then do what they want with it. You're giving power to yourself because other people will be able to to also support what you support. And that is that trust, that honesty, uh, that self reflection. And it's very I was just a bit worried when you were saying the word power because that has been misused <laughs> by other YouTubers uh, in the past, <laughs> and they got flamed for it. Um, Great. No, no I, I mean, not the power with the uh, over the the viewers, Over the viewers. But no, no, it gives us it, it, it gives us the independence that again, if, if we know if you have a channel that every brand wants to be on and they will take the critique gladly just to be on the channel, that is where you want to be. And I don't think realist, I don't think we have that channel yet. I don't think we have that channel in our community that is no. so big that you just have to be on it no matter what they say. We have channels that everyone wants to be on very badly, but they don't really deal in gear. Um, we have channels that everyone wants to be on very badly, but they're not really critical. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, something lame I was going to say is uh, the viewers do own part of the channel, but Valeria and Amanda, they own part of my heart. Ooh. Um, hang on, I've got a sound effect for that. <laughs> <laughs> had to be done um, it does no it's, yeah. it's a, I just want to bring up one of the yeah. comments from one of the viewers who hopefully is still with us it was from a while ago ironically from a user called I love it all um, who says self-reflecting influencers worried about their credibility are a rare species on YouTube thank you but I actually disagree there are many of us but um I just think some of them get they're just quite small. I think some of the upcoming channels, some of these smaller channels are more responsible for their words than some of the larger channels these days. I think that credibility is increasing rather than decreasing. So I know I've warned people not to sell themselves to try and get those next subs or to get paid um, by whichever brand. But I, I believe that the at least the channels that I see coming up are more honest than the channels that were coming up around you know sort of sub 10,000 subs when I was at that level well because they're talking to us and we're telling them be honest or else you get a kick in the bum exactly exactly it's not doesn't go for everybody but yeah if you want to succeed just tell the truth just be nice and we could hang around for a lot longer but we've had a really long show I want to say one, one, one more thing about yeah, go you on, go on go on I mean first of all you are a friend late inviter just letting you know <laughs> Okay, that's a bad thing. But something you need to know about Andy, other than that he's a friend, Lady Inviter. Um, some of you might not know this. I'm trying to say this without saying any brands. But the biggest sign of integrity that I've ever seen from anyone in the world that is more impressive than anything is when someone works for a company X interviews a very, 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 very big wig from company other letter. Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and um, big, big, big deal. Okay. Big, 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 big wig from big, big, big company. And then said company does something unethical and on his own channel, not thinking about his job with company X or, or anything says, I don't like what just happened there. I think I've been lied to. And someone who needs to get up in the morning to look in the mirror and can only do that because they've done the right thing deserves the most respect in the world forget what he ever said about pedals or whatever and that he says fuzzes are good which they're not but um some someone who will jeopardize so much 
given the fact that there's kids at home and all that stuff, uh, will always tell you the blatant truth because that was a huge thing to do. And I don't think a lot of people know it and don't even look it up. It's not necessary. But that showed me that this is a guy that I can trust. Then he waited 55 episodes to invite me and all that trust was gone. What if but I what if I told it you it wasn't it wasn't me, it was the other guy. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> really, Dan? <laughs> really? Yeah. yeah. Fight, fight, fight. Thank you for saying that, Henning. Um It's true. You know, uh all I can say is that doing the right thing is often the easiest thing. That's all that's all I can say to that. It's the only way uh, to do it. Yeah. Um I want to sum this up, if I may, by saying that what I think we're all, the three of us are saying is that we love guitars, we love the guitar community, and we want there to be guitars forever and for this community to grow. That can only happen is if everyone behaves and tells the truth, but also has some responsibility for the things they say and the things they listen and interpret. So mm -hmm. I, I think for me, the takeaway is that we all have to be responsible with what we read, what we watch, and what we listen to, but also what we publish. And just be aware that everything that's put in front of you isn't always there to be your best friend. And if there's a problem interpreting the facts, then you can follow people like us, who hopefully risk their bums, um, trying to interpret the facts for you. And from now on, you look a little bit more critical at a best of list. If someone just call, just see it as their their favorites. Mm -hmm. In your head, yeah. when you see best of, cross that out, say stuff we liked, which makes it a lot better. Yeah, it's easy. Yep. If you know someone's motivation for doing something, then you can understand a lot more about it. The thing they've done. Do you think this podcast is any on any best of lists? No, probably not. I highly doubt it. Best podcast to. No, can't do it. <laughs> I always have, I also have, have, have to admit that usually when I see these best of lists at the end of the year, I'm kind of really just peeved because there's always like the you know the best YouTube personalities and um and you're not on the list. Well, I was on it. it <laughs> I was on it once and I think I did second to last. And but best YouTube guitar personalities for me is like what have they done during the year? What have they done for the community? Uh nine out of the 20 I had never heard of mm. and I do gear street so it's weird if I haven't heard of them <laughs> then who are these people and I'm sorry but 2020 that's really cr cr creams my corn as they say mm. um 2020 the year of everyone had to stay at home I pulled off the only guitar event in 2020 as Andy put it so beautifully um welcome and then they make a list of here are the guitar personalities that did something 2020 not being on that list i know that's petty and i shouldn't say it but it really bumped me out because <laughs> i pulled off gear street yeah. we, we did it we did a guitar event safely with people and for that magazine or whatever to not recognize that means either they had no idea about it or they just don't like me and I didn't sleep well that night. And I know that's petty, petty, petty Patterson, but that's why I don't like those lists because I'm not on them. <laughs> yeah. So, and if, if anyone is interested in uh, having or uh, checking out our top 55 episodes list on iTunes, there's a superb <laughs> list of the top 55 episodes of the Guitar Stories podcast. But the best uh, one starts last, right? Uh, it depends, but uh, while you're there, you can leave us a five-star rating, of course, and leave a comment and show us your appreciation or criticism or whatever you want. But uh, let yourself be heard. Um, is there anything else you would like to add? I think we're, we're all kind of off because we need to check out the, the, the five coolest Tread guitars on YouTube uh, tonight. That's still on my well, I've, uh, I've watch later. My, I've got to film my five greatest Tread licks of all. All right, things. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, That's still my, my watch list. So, Henning, thanks so much for being on. Thank guest. you for finally coming on the show. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, so many invites had have been without a response from his end, but finally he made it. 
<laughs> he's too busy, my, Dan. He's too busy. My five, my five favorite Ivanus guitars with locking tuners. But wait, are there even five? <laughs> 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 oh, dear, dear, dear. <laughs> we, we will, it's all we, in jest. We love each other. Yeah. Ivanus guitars are the second best guitars in the world. And we will find out tomorrow how many uh, guitars with locking tuners we have. No doubt about that. I saw some without. I'm going to bitch about that. But they're nice guitars. Did you see those nice new Ivanus? <laughs> and there's one with... <laughs> <laughs> before he gives away any stuff that you're not supposed to know before January 1st thanks so much to all the mo uh, moderators to everyone in the chat I think we had like 80, 80 viewers live viewers that's amazing so uh, hopefully you enjoy that maybe at some point like episode 365 Henning will be back <laughs> the, the topic will be the same but the jokes yeah. will be slightly different all right <laughs> <laughs> That's to be expected. <laughs> All right, guys. Um, Thanks so much for watching, right? Yeah, I, I wish I was there in this room right now because if it was, I'd be sleeping on Dan's floor tonight. And that is a that is a thing that I have dreamed about many a time. So it will happen. I'm sorry I didn't make it to your event, Dan. Um, I'm the one suffering, not you. We will we'll make for up. Well, I we'll gotta make check out Ivan's guitars. That's suffering. Yeah. You'll be getting out my house next time. Rubbish, so. yeah, Andy, by the yeah. way, I just told Dan that when when he gets in the guitar that I, I want to check out, I would actually give him money for it. I just told him I would buy an Ibanez guitar and not a cheap one. Yeah, yeah. What is wrong with me? Yeah. We need to have a talk and you need to tell me not to do it. Not okay. And, and, and it oh. doesn't have locking tuners. <laughs> the irony, right? The, the irony. irony. <laughs> well, if you do buy it, maybe I can find you some. I'll take them off one of mine and throw them your direction. Thanks Remember, everybody, people. locking tuners does not a tuned guitar make, but it sometimes helps. Buy my course. Um, buy <laughs> Henning's course, sub to all the channels. Um, go and unsubscribe to all those channels that you think we might have been talking about this evening but didn't mention, because that... <laughs> no, I mean it. That... That is putting your power where your power is needed. All right. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm only half joking. But yeah, um, make sure there's more guitar players in the future. That's all we need to do. Uh, everybody, oh, yeah. Dan has asked you to leave five stars and stuff, but don't forget to take your grandma's phone and your neighbor's grandma's phone and do five stars on the audio version of the podcast. Um, genuinely heading, phone. thank you. Neighbor's grandma's, grandma's phone. phone. Yeah. So the what grandma the big... of your neighbor. Yeah. I could have said the grandma of your neighbor, but that'd be weird. <laughs> and, do, we have, uh, do we have any animals animals at the end? No. Uh, my cat was at the window did... just a moment ago, if that, if that helps. But um, no, don't I mean, forget, it's, it's, uh, cat, it's but... better to burn out than to fade away. Stories Podcast, your number one show for everything.